Welcome to your sanity safe space. Not a fucking issue. With your favorite YouTube podcast duo. You're fucking a white man. And a white female, too. Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. <laughs> Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement. This, this. is Beauty and the Beta. <laughs> and we will make America great again. Ooh, bitch, you got coronavirus. Out here in the fields, I fought for my meals. When did this become flatten the curve, flatten the curve, flatten the curve to we have to find a cure? Imagine working for like a year, five years, ten years, two decades, grinding your fingers to the bone to build a business. They're gonna wake up whenever this thing ends, whenever the mayors say, oh, you can go back to work. Work to what? Your company's gonna be out of business. I don't need to be If you told me because of Corona, I lost Barstool, I had to go get a nine to five and start fucking over, I'd rather die of Corona, seriously. Get the hell out of here, there's risk. We're Americans, you have to take risks. If people wanna go out, they can go out. If they wanna stay in, they stay in. That is correct. You are fake news. I will eat your ass. I'll do it. Very fake news. You want the boogaloo? Cause that's how you get the boogaloo, okay folks? All right, America, go to the YouTube right now. Skank, where you are, he is. You are a terrific team on all counts. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Hello and welcome to the show. It is a great show. It is a terrific show. It is a tremendous show. Frankly, the best. You can ask anyone about that. People often do. This is... Beauty and the Beta. My name is Matt Christensen. I'm flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. Hey. Another uh, week of news to recap, and actually a ton of uh, information to pick up on stories we left off last week. There's a little more info on the Ahmad Arbery case, details that have emerged since last we discussed. And I still uh, don't know how to feel about it. It's a complex case, and if you believe the attorney for uh, Travis McMichael, there's a, there's more video evidence we have yet to see. So that's one of the details. We'll get into it. Um, of course, last week we thought the Michael Flynn case was over. Not so. Uh, due to the curious actions of the judge overseeing the case, I don't fully understand, but we're going to try to. And now Joe Biden has been pulled into the controversy even more than he already was by that right-wing hack, Catherine Herridge. Uh, Elon Musk, congrats to him, successfully fought off the state of California, or at least Alameda County, to open up his Tesla plant. And he had uh, a baby last week. Yeah, I, for, I was just listening to the Joe Rogan episode today, and he explained how to pronounce the name or what the name is, and I still didn't get it. No, it's nonsense. But uh, anyway, we'll go through that. Weijia, I think it's Weijia Zhang. Anyway, the, the lady who formerly claimed, last, or in March, she claimed that a White House official had said Kung flu to her face, a, C a CBS reporter. She starts a Chinese virus fight with Trump again, and then Trump just ends the press conference. Uh, did you see the Greta, Greta Thunberg? I want to make sure I pronounce it correctly. Greta Thunberg and her appearance on CNN during the coronavirus fact and fears town hall. Catch any of that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, she had her, the, the the interview was as boring and as pointless as you'd expect, but actually it was Anderson Cooper's kind of insulted defense at the end of it uh, in response to Don Jr. and some other people that made it a little more entertaining. That and um, just just the repeated pronunciation of Greta Thunberg was the most Is noteworthy that how thing you out say of it? that. Uh, that's what Anderson Cooper is going with. Mm. And then before we get out of here, hoax hate has taken a leave of absence. Apparently not a lot of hate hoaxers getting out there amid coronavirus. But this week we have a three piece. They're back and active. One of them related to the Ahmad uh, Arbery case, actually the pink Panther sounder will be revived. It returns triumphantly at the end of the show. And the pink Panther copyright holders aren't going to stop me. We will take super chats on YouTube Streamlabs, or D live in between topics. Of course, 10 bucks and up on the shun uh, Sunday show, not the Sunday. So the Sunday show, because we are no good low down 
Money Grabbers, it will be all this and more in your favorite couple hours of listening material. Remember, you can find everything show-related and support the show over on the website. That's mattchristensenmedia.com. One of the many things we have featured over on the website is special deals from listener-owned businesses. Of course, this week's feature business is our friends over at Hero Soap Company. Hero Soap uses no synthetic chemicals, dyes, or fragrances, just fantastic smelling natural ingredients from a veteran-owned company with a focus on benefiting veteran charities like the Gary Sinise Foundation and the Wounded Warrior Project. Let freedom clean, knowing you are avoiding harmful chemicals and helping worthy pro-America causes in the process. And the best way to keep clean is to subscribe. Not only will Hero send you a fresh bar to your door each month so you never run out, but... Hero will also match the amount of soap you purchase and send it to an overseas deployment location. Hero is offering listeners of this show 10% off all their products using promo code MCLISTENER. Let freedom clean at herosoapcompany.com. Promo code MCLISTENER for 10% off store-wide. You can find everything you need from Hero Soap Company. Plus uh, other deals from the rest of our friendly listener-owned businesses, including Charity Swipes, Phoenix Ammunition, Sonoran Defense Technologies, and more at mattchristensenmedia.com slash deals. Deals for listeners by listeners. Now that um, in some places of the world you can legally meet with friends again, I don't know where you are, but it, I guess it's legal in, uh, in Melbourne. Proper pronunciation, I believe. Melbourne, Australia. We got this uh, image from our listener group there. Uh, I'm told that the lockdown is ending or in the process of, or at least you can go to a park and not socially distance with your friends and give white supremacist hand signs. Uh They weren't arrested. They weren't arrested as far as I can tell. How fun. Um, But it's glad. Yeah. It's good to see people getting out and it looks like there's plenty of sun there to kill the virus. If you guys are in fact infected, but as lockdowns start to ease, if you are in fact looking for new friends, listeners of this show, people who might share your similar Nazi white supremacist views or whatever, uh, check out the community page on the website, mattchristensenmedia.com slash community. And uh, if you do have a successful listener meetup, send us a, send us a picture and perhaps we'll share it on the show. Something very Uh, important happened in my town yesterday. What's that? My husband and I went out to dinner. Mm. I know, right? And everybody was just getting drunk. Nobody was wearing masks. It was fantastic. The whole town, everybody on the street, no social distancing, no masks. It was awesome. Same thing here. We went out on uh, Saturday night as well. The establishment asked us if we wanted a server to wear a mask, to which we said, we were like, "Mm." no. (laughs) <laughs> but at least it's an optional thing, I guess. That was nice. And then at this place, they didn't even let you have menus. You had to like scan a barcode on your phone to look at the menu. Yeah. They gave us paper long, menus but, hmm. that were limited, it, but it felt normal. Things felt normal. It was pretty so. close. It is getting pretty close. And I saw a whole bunch of, uh, I'm surprised the health department didn't shut down the booths in this place because it had, you know, they had these big horseshoe shaped booths that are right next to each other. And there's probably six, seven, eight people in each booth, none of whom are socially distancing. I couldn't believe it, but I didn't snitch. Also went to a lemonade stand a few hours ago, neighborhood lemonade oh, stand with three little girls. That's didn't adorable. snitch. Didn't call the cops. I don't, I think they, I think they made off like bandits with nothing but Corona infected cash. Did you see that so, Rand Paul tweet today? I did not. What did he uh, tweet? He was tweeting about the fatality rate for under 60s being identical to an average flu season. Interesting. Well, he's a doctor, but he's a doctor who doesn't count, of course. Naturally. Yeah, I forget. Uh, when he had that exchange with Fauci uh, the other week or last week, there was one blue check on Twitter who's, who ripped Rand Paul for being unqualified to speak about medicine or speak about, you know, the things Fauci's qualified to speak about. Fauci's and Fauci's a doctor. How dare you? Well, so is Rand Paul. Yep. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, all right. So let's catch up on the Arbery case. There's not a lot here and I don't want to rehash the whole story again, but um, some things that have emerged this week that we didn't get a chance to cover during our discussion last week. So in the meantime, additional surveillance images have emerged potentially showing Ahmad Arbery in the home under construction on several occasions dating back to October. So it's believed that these images are of Ahmad Arbery and that, and that he had been in the home from 
uh, at various times between October 2019 and when the shooting happened in February 2020. It is not confirmed, though. The identity has not been confirmed by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and Arbery's mom denies that that is him in the surveillance images that you see. Well, she would. Yeah, I'm just saying... I. We can't uh, we can't say with certainty that it is him, but it's probably a fair a fair assumption or a fair conclusion. You just want to qualify it. I don't know if this changes anything for me because I was always operating under the assumption that this was a burglary of sorts. Well, the the only thing these facts do change is that there's a lot of support for the idea that there was repeated entry into this home. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean criminal, but the all this information shows us that this was an ongoing thing, both for, it looks like, Arbery and for uh, Travis McMichael, who is the son who did the sh- who, you know, pulled the trigger that killed Arbery. So as far as why this person, again, not confirmed, but believed to be Arbery, was in that, uh, cons- that home under construction, the, the lawyer for the homeowner says that it appears the young man may have been coming onto the property for water. There is a water source at the dock behind the house, as well as a source near the front of the structure. Although the water sources do not appear within any of the camera's frames, the young man moves to and from their locations. This according, this isn't even Arbery's lawyer. This is the lawyer for the, for the homeowner. That does not sound feasible. It seems, and it, and it just seems it's possible, but it seems weird to me like, Oh, I just, I entered homes looking for water and succeeded here. Maybe, uh, may, and maybe he is going for water in addition to other things, whatever, draw your own conclusions. Uh, that's just what the lawyer for the homeowner is saying. The, as I mentioned, the defense attorneys for, uh, Gregory McMichael. So that's the dad, not, uh, I assume the legal team is the same for the father and son, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, on Friday, the defense team says they've examined evidence that quote tells a very different story. Uh, attorney Laura Hogue told reporters quote, there is more than one video of the incident. Now, does that mean more than one video of the shooting? Does that mean m- multiple videos containing facts that are relevant to how this played out? I don't know, but according to the defense attorney, there is relevant evidence that is not yet available for public consideration so we'll see when that comes out and then we also learned this week that uh travis mcmichael the son had called 911 to report uh somebody entering the construction property nearly two weeks before the shooting so uh he told the dispatcher he'd seen a man enter the construction site and said i've never seen this guy before in the neighborhood again this two weeks before the shooting on the call mcmichael said he saw the guy who was entering the home reach into his pocket and run into the house saying he was acting like he was armed uh, but, uh, and so again, that's, that's not conclusive to say that it was Arbery he witnessed. That's not conclusive to say Arbery was armed, but again, well, that dis- kind of does change things for me. It, at, at minimum, this appears to be an ongoing thing. It was not a snap thing that happened in the moment that one day. It's kind of what we've learned over time. And there's presumably, um, more information coming. Another big story from last week. <laughs> That I'm excited to update. Of course, we saw the guy shopping at the grocery store in the San Diego area in a clan hood because he was Confirmed just... Confirmed troll. He was complying with uh, with the mandatory mask rule. But yes, you're right. The uh, He is confirmed to have been trolling, not expressing his racial hatred. When we left the story, the San Diego Sheriff's Department had hinted they were still considering charges against the guy somehow. We learned this week they're not going to do that per a San Diego Sheriff's Department statement. Um, After the, so the Sheriff's Department did interrogate the guy. After the interrogation, detectives confirmed with both the U.S. Attorney's Office and uh, and the San Diego County Sheriff's, or San San Diego County District Attorney's Office, uh, witnesses of the incident were interviewed and video evidence was scrutinized. An analysis of all relevant criminal statutes was undertaken. As a result, it was determined there was insufficient evidence to charge the man who wore the KKK hood inside the store. The department cited the U.S. Supreme Court precedent on hate speech, asserting speech that demeans on the basis of race, ethnicity, blah, 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 is hateful. But the, but the proudest boast of our free speech jurisprudence is that we protect the freedom to express the thought that we hate. Um, and to your point that he was confirmed 
troll, it says uh, in their report, the man expressed frustration with the with coronavirus and having people tell him what to do. He said that wearing the hood was not intended to be a racial statement. In summary, he said it was a mask and it was stupid. So, <laughs> yeah, saw that coming from a mile away. Uh, and of course, um, while Congress keeps working on making the money printer go burr, or at least trying to, they are, in fact, uh, working on other important bills as well that receive very little comparative attention. So this week, the Senate voted to reauthorize the USA Freedom Act, hilariously named, just like the Patriot Act, that it reforms. It really means the uh, government's freedom to spy on you without a warrant by going through the rubber stamp secret court known as the FISA court. Uh, but anyway... Uh, that that was under consideration in the Senate this week. Specifically, the, the USA Freedom Act lets law enforcement collect, quote, tangible things, <laughs> seemingly anything, tangible things related to national security investigations without a warrant. So only approval from, uh, from the FISA courts. Recall, of course, Edward Snowden uh, previously revealed in 2013 that government had been collecting phone records of every single customer of phone companies, including Verizon. Uh, mm. Under the Patriot Act, the Freedom Act in 2015 was initially a response to that scandal, aiming for more oversight and transparency. Anyway, why is this relevant this week? Well, they're reauthorizing it, and you may have seen it reported this week that the Senate voted to allow the government to search your web browsing history uh, without a warrant. That's close, but it's not technically correct. They voted not to ban it. It can still happen and has happened with frequency. So Democrat oh, no. Ron Wyden of Oregon and Republican Steve Daines of Montana introduced an amendment that would have expressly forbidden the warrantless collection of internet website browsing and search history through a FISA application. They needed 60 votes and they got uh, 59. They came up one short. The amended reauthorization now goes to the House and potentially to the president's desk without the oh, uh, no. without that protection for your internet searches. So Big Daddy government uh, gives you your allowance of Corona bucks and also can watch very closely to make sure you spend those Corona bucks wisely. Doesn't it feel good to be so safe? Aren't you happy about this that? This is disastrous. Uh, well, at least at least we're all equally screwed. I mean, who has a clean and innocent internet search? I'm pretty history? sure I'm more screwed than your average citizen. Well, maybe you have. Uh, well, uh, I don't know why. Why? Why? Why are you more screwed? I, I, I'm pretty sure everybody has seriously bizarre stuff they've googled for various reasons. Uh, I mean, if you look at my browser search history non consecutively, you could probably drum up some sort of terrorist related charge hmm. i mean like research about guns and about locations where guns would be good the most sniper effective. posts <laughs> <Things> like, <laughs> for the I race mean, war yeah I've, I've definitely googled a lot of stuff like that and duck All duck right. go is no better oh do they well uh, yeah do they protect you at all isn't that there aren't they supposed the to be the claim was thing? they were protecting us but they're collecting data too so hmm. Anyway, so uh, browse wisely, uh, you know. No, they'll, don't they'll... browse wisely. <laughs> browse well, in the way that you see fit, and then we can all go down together. That's true. Browse more recklessly than ever so that we're all equally screwed. Uh, anyway, they'll come after you just like they came after Michael Flynn. So we, we thought this story was over. I want to talk about this and then get into how Biden has been, I would say, roped into. He was already involved, but now his involvement is is even more um, complicated for him uh, in, in the so-called Obamagate, as, as Trump uh, tweeted out. Anyway, so the last few weeks, we've seen the case against uh, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn totally fall apart. First, we got those released FBI notes and uh, as well as additional information noting the FBI was going to drop the case. Then Peter Strzok uh, intervened. Then we saw the notes that said, what's our goal here? Are we trying to find the truth or are we trying to get Flynn to lie so we can get him fired or prosecute him? And then of course, as we covered last week, the DOJ decided to drop the case outright since there was no valid basis or underlying crime about which to question Flynn in the first place. You'd think that would be the end of the story. You'd think that he was going to go back to some sort of normal life. And then the case takes an even more bizarre turn this week and uh, frankly, I'm not even confident in how to explain it. It's so weird. But the federal judge overseeing the Flynn case, uh, U.S. District Judge Emmett G. Sullivan, said in an order on Tuesday 
that he expects individuals and organizations will intervene. So third parties, not Michael Flynn, not the Justice Department prosecuting him. Third parties will intervene in the politically charged case. So he is putting the case on hold because having others weigh in could preface more aggressive steps the judge could take, including holding a hearing to consider what to do. This according to the Washington Post's reporting here. Judge Sullivan says he will, uh, quote, at the appropriate time, set a schedule for outside parties to argue against the Justice Department claims as the government seeks to drop the charges. Uh, Flynn lawyer Sidney Powell has objected, of course, and uh, she's um, she's saying uh, that in, in the more than two years of, of Flynn's prosecution, quote, this court has consistently on 24 previous occasions summarily refused to permit any third party to inject themselves or their views into this case. She's challenging the constitutionality of Sullivan's order as well, saying the courts have no authority to, to permit a third party to usur usurp the role of government's counsel in prosecuting mm. an individual in a criminal case. Now, as I said, I am not a great legal mind, uh, but what the hell is this? What the hell is going on here? Maybe you can explain it to me or someone in the audience who has a more, uh, more technical legal knowledge can explain it to me. But if the prosecutors no longer wish to prosecute, is right. that not the end of the case? If the judge intervenes on behalf of the prosecution or to preserve the prosecution, maybe is more accurate, an accurate way to say it. How is the judge neutral then? How is he not just a member of the prosecution? Right. I mean, if there's anything I've learned about this FISA fiasco and Papadopoulos and Carter Page and Flynn, it's that normal criminal and even civil proceedings become irrelevant when there is a widespread political motive. And so I'm not even like, what is the law supposed to say here? Because I genuinely believe that they don't give a fuck and they're not. I'm left to conclude the motive is strictly political because even, first of all, what do you, you're going to put this on hold and let's say some third party, some political interest group comes forth and says, okay, the case shouldn't have been dropped. Do we think there's a credible prosecution of Michael? Flynn? Great. Who's going to prosecute it? Right. Not the DOJ. Who? You? Random person? You don't have the authority to bring a criminal charge against him. What are you talking about? And then if they went through with something like that and up, like convicted him or sentenced him, I don't think this would stand on appeal. That's my layman speculation, but it seems like this is nonsense that would not survive challenge elsewhere so why would they do it it seems to me that but it's got to be some look how far it it got yeah it seems to me it's got to be some like draw it out tactic some politically motivated extend this thing into infinity and beyond tactic some delay tactic i don't get it maybe someone can explain it to me i this is this is beyond my capacity to understand this is just weird i mean they they have uncovered exonerating evidence the, the fact that they're trying to take this further is not surprising yet still I'm, 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 I am surprised anyway. Okay. So how does this get into Biden Ugh. and uh, the ongoing developments Harris. of, of, uh, of Obama gate as it's been called? Well, Catherine Harridge, uh, of course, recall that she first published the documents showing those FBI notes, uh, asking whether we should try to get the truth about Flynn or, or get him to lie. She put those on Twitter first. She also published uh, this newly declassified list of Obama administration officials who had requested Flynn's unmasking. So the idea here is that there was FISA surveillance of Russian ambassador uh, Sergei Kislyak and certain government officials requested the identity of who Kislyak was talking to, a.k.a. unmasking. And that person who was unmasked was Michael Flynn. And you have a list of the people who made those requests provided here, uh, declassified by Richard Grinnell, Catherine Harridge Publishing. You go to the last one on the list, Vice President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden, 12th of January, 2017. In other words, uh, unmasking the identity of Michael Flynn, unwarranted spying on a U.S. citizen. That's that's the scandal that we're dealing with here, presumably for political purposes. Again, it has not been demonstrated that there was any sufficient underlying reason for questioning Flynn in the first place. Right. So what what are you doing other than political spying is, is the is the conclusion you're left with at that point. Uh, 
So this in combination with um, with previous reporting that Obama officials, including the president himself, had a meeting to discuss the investigation of Flynn after the 2016 election. I mean, it suggests that Biden was well aware of this effort. Not only was he a party to the meeting, he made a request to unmask Flynn like he, he was a direct party to this. And Biden was asked directly by George Stephanopoulos on ABC on Tuesday if he knew anything about the Flynn investigation uh, when the surveillance was happening uh, or what, you know, all the events that have happened in the prosecution since. And Biden gave an answer I can't even follow. It's kind of a denial, kind of an admission. Make of it what you will. So what did you know about those moves to investigate uh, Michael Flynn? And was there anything improper done? I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn, number one. Number two, this is all about diversion. This is a game this guy plays all the time. The country is in crisis. We're in an economic crisis, a health crisis. We're in real trouble. He should stop trying to always divert attention from the real concerns of the American people. It's all about diversion. I do want to press that. You say you didn't know anything about it, but you were reported to be at a January 5th, 2017 meeting where you and the president were briefed on the FBI's plan to question Michael, Michael Flynn over those uh, conversations he had with the uh, Russian ambassador Kislyak. Now, I thought you asked me whether or not I had anything to do with him being prosecuted. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I was aware <laughs> that there was that, there, that they asked for an investigation, but that's all I know about it. There's no way. He, I mean, obviously, this is a lie. He had all the knowledge that Obama had at the time. Clearly. He went from I was not aware to I'm sorry. I thought you were asking whether I prosecuted or had knowledge of the prosecution or involvement of the prosecution with Flynn. To yes, I was aware. I mean, why would you have involvement with the prosecution? And it's not just misunderstanding the question that was asked to you. You said at the start, I was not aware of any of it. He would have been better off having one of his dementia moments, right? (laughs) It seems like he did. And it's a smaller point, but I love that he immediately diverts to accusing Trump of diverting. Diversion. (laughs) It's like you were asked a a pointed question and you diverted by accusing someone else of diversion. Yeah, it it was hilarious. Okay, so uh, of course, this is very um, inconvenient for Joe Biden. And it's very inconvenient for Joe Biden's supporters and very inconvenient for Joe Biden's campaign. So after Catherine Herridge published the the unmasking names, this is Andrew Bates, who is the rapid response director for Biden's presidential campaign. He tweeted scoop, mocking Catherine Herridge's scoop. Uh, Catherine Herridge is a partisan right wing hack who is a regular conduit for conservative media manipulation ploys because she agrees to publish uh, publicize things before contact uh, before contacting the target uh, to ask for comments. OK, uh, that, that's bullshit. She works for CBS now. Herridge, it, 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 even even if that were true, like she she published a whole bunch of uh commentary or opinion about the unmasking all she did was she got the unmasking documents posted them on twitter for people to see she didn't even offer comment i don't think she said anything all she said was uh was scoop cbs obtained uh richard grinnell's notification to congress declassifying the unmasking list for flynn you can read the three pages provided by the the nsa here that's it so yeah, I mean, if you're writing a story, maybe ask for comment, but she's just putting the documents out there for people to see as fast as she possibly can. I can't falter for that. Uh, okay, and it's, it, the, anyway, it's funny how the, the people who normally circle the wagons to protect media heroes and victims from the onslaught of the Trump administration criticism, suddenly they, they go knives out for a reporter who's just putting factual information out right. there. It's not even her commentary. It's not even a bullshit question that she asked. It's just, hey, here's some newly released information. Would you like to consume it? Here you go. That is, um, that is a being a conduit for conservative media manipulation. Again, what's the manipulation? Well, they were it's talking a- about, presumably talking about her history on Fox News, but she's always done remarkably unbiased reporting. Always. She I operates see. with the utmost integrity. I, I love Catherine Herridge. And then yeah, now that she's working at CBS, I fail to see why this is even in discussion anymore. And I don't even have to rely on her. In this case, she's just providing me the primary document. Right. That's it. I don't need her characterization or her description. He deleted that tweet, right? He did delete the tweet. Yeah. 
And uh, anyway, in the meantime, Biden just keeps gaffing it up uh, on his this uh, so bad Ugh. on his live streams from his basement. Check out uh, this doozy this week. He's explaining the coronavirus death and unemployment numbers. We're 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 we're, we're it's a, we're in the middle of a pandemic that had cost us more than eighty five thousand jobs as of today. Lives of millions of people, millions of people, millions of jobs. You know, and we're in a position where, you know, we just got new unemployment insurance this morning, uh, n- numbers, 36.5 million claims since this crisis began. He's not even people's grandpa. He's people's great grandpa. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was gaffy and everything, but like he uh, corrected himself or I don't even think he realized that he had made a verbal error in the beginning, but he did say millions of jobs later in the segment like back yeah. to back with saying millions of lives millions of jobs well if my question is you know if it's if it's eighty five thousand jobs lost and millions dead what about the jobs of the millions dead are those still available because <laughs> i know some people who are looking for work yeah anyway I, I, all of this led to a, a very interesting interview on uh, fox news with uh communication dnc communications director I can't even say her damn name. I think I heard uh, Bill Hemmer say like Sochi. Really? Or is that the place in the, that's the Japanese city. It's Zoe. like, it's Zoe. X-O-C-H-I-T-L Hinojosa. Hinojosa, I don't know. Zochitl's Hinojosa. Anyway, communi- communications director for the DNC and you can't communicate her name. She appeared in an interview on Fox News with Bill Hemmer. And the interview was, uh, it's worth a listen because they really got into the Flynn stuff and Biden's involvement and watching her go through all of her mental gymnastics, still claiming Russian collusion is a thing, was pretty entertaining. But what's noteworthy about this interview is at the end, Hemmer asks her about the Democrats' convention plan and whether they uh, may do it digitally or even remotely. And in response... She said the convention will happen because, quote, we are not officially nominating Joe Biden in order to take Donald Trump. Now, was this a misspeak? Was this intentional? Have a listen. Decide for yourself. I just want to be clear about this. I mean, there's a real possibility that the convention does not happen or it happens in a virtual sense. Is that correct as of today? Well, first of all, our convention has to happen because we um, are not officially nominating Joe Biden in order to take Donald Trump. So our convention is happening. There is business that has to happen. We will make sure that they are safe, whatever that looks like, and that they vote for our nominee. Uh, I mean, initially, I would say from the first half, I would say that she was just saying they're not specifically nominating Joe Biden to take Donald Trump, you know. But then or, later, our nominee is yeah. Suggested. I mean, she she's I could see she was saying we're not just nominating Joe Biden. We have a bunch of other official business to do. It was just a misspeak. But yeah, the way at the end where she says we're going to make sure our delegates are safe to vote for our nominee. Now maybe she means Joe Biden, but she didn't say Joe Biden. She said our nominee. She anyway, means Kamala Harris when Joe Biden dies. As of Thursday, uh, according to the reporting I'd seen, she had not yet clarified her remark. I don't see a tweet explaining it either. So if people know of a clarification on that one, please send it my way. I wonder if it was deliberately confusing. I, the whole interview was just hysterical. That that woman, the idea that she's in the business of directing communications. Well, you watch that eight minute, minute interview and tell me uh, Incomprehensible. how that came to be. Like her being white, yet having a name like that. Also incomprehensible. Jacques Jacques Atoll. He People are saying it's like Zochiel. Zochiel. So I'm going with Sochi. Sochi Olympics. You say she's Japanese. I, I don't. Hinojosa sounds loosely Japanese. I don't know. I, I referenced the Japanese Olympics that were in Sochi. Hinojosa. That's all. <laughs> Race. All right. Um, and before we end on the uh, Biden stuff, Obama. Obama's back at it, uh, formerly, or at least... She's Mexican. Oh. What? Yeah. How the hell? Okay, so it's Hinojosa? Hinojosa, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Obama, until recently, had mostly, in my opinion, done a good job of shutting the hell up. And I don't care <laughs> who you are as an ex-president. If you shut the hell up, thumbs up for me. I appreciate that. Thumbs up for shutting the hell up. 
He had mostly done that, but lately, of course, he can't help himself. Um, and he's been offering commentary on the Trump administration. He offered commentary on Flynn that we heard last week and supposedly leaked audio that he didn't want to get out there. But this week he emerged to give a digital commencement address for historically black colleges and universities, and he ripped the Trump administration's handling of coronavirus. Have a listen to that. That our society and our democracy only works when we think not just about ourselves, but about each other. More than anything, this pandemic has fully finally torn back the curtain on the idea that so many of the folks in charge know what they're doing. A lot of them aren't even pretending to be in charge. If the world's going to get better, it's going to be up to you. <laughs> Oddly enough, I actually kind of agree with the premises, but I can't believe he reaches the conclusions that he does from his premises. And I, I don't say that to agree that I think that the Trump administration's done a terrible job with coronavirus. I, I really don't think they have. I think they've done a good job of, of keeping decisions more local than federal and preserving states' rights. However, I do agree with Obama's premise that people in charge, it's often an illusion that they have any idea what they're doing. They're just as prone to make mistakes as anybody else. They're just as capable of being wrong as anybody else. So if we, and, and you should take control of making the change in your life that you want to see. I agree with all of those things. Yet, how does he go from those premises to the conclusion that the federal government ought to control everything? There ought to there be centralized power. There should be more power. welfare dependence. His conclusion seemingly is these guys have no idea what they're doing, but it's not central power that's the problem. It's just having the right people in central power because we'll get the right guy to do it, of course. That's, oh, that's always the conclusion. Just the, the perfect, benevolent, uh, intelligent man to run everything instead of maybe you should take control of it for yourself, but whatever. Anyway, uh, I liked the Obama who just shut the hell up. That's the point. Yeah, but he was always behind the scenes meddling. Probably. I'm probably naive to think he was just uh, he was just sitting back playing PlayStation or something like that. Yeah. All right. I, I definitely want to get into Elon Musk and some other big lockdown wins this week. Might be wise to take a brief break before we do sure. that. And I never do. I never reward you D-Live guys with the treasure chest early. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Sit tight for that. And uh, over on DLive. Oh, we're good. Over on DLive. Thanks for supporting the show, guys. Um, I see my friends, Hannah and James, in the live chat. Hi, guys. Well, hello. My two IRL friends. Ah. Um, all right. Aaron Moyo. My last message wasn't a troll. Sweet Tomatoes is a buffet-style restaurant. Oh, that's right. Actually called Soul Plantation in SoCal. Uh, hmm. Soup Plantation. Sorry. Uh, that sounded racist to me. That's why I was like, I thought it was a trap. Yeah. Um, or rather was 4,400 jobs not coming back. Point is it's not Oof. just small business going under. That is so terrible. Woof. Yeah. We'll get uh, into that in a minute. I bought PN says I would like to order one sanity safe space, please. We're trying to sure, deliver. Coming, coming right up. I hope. Um, Freddie saw sent you an email earlier, but to know if you got it, I'm going to be a pilot uh, at the pilot truck stop in Belgrade, I-90, uh, 28. Belgrade. Belgrade, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 298, exit 298. Outside Bozeman tomorrow, then passing Blonde the next morning. Matt, do you want to make love? Uh, private inquiry only. Uh, I, I, I have looked at my email a little bit today, but I will look at my email, uh, tonight slash tomorrow. If it's tomorrow, I got to say probably not. I got a lot of commitments tomorrow. So unfortunately, he's busy with to... other promiscuous sex acts. At truck, Correct. Truck stops, yeah. But I will, I'll get to the email and of course I uh, have a good drive. Agent Flippy. I'm curious if either of you heard of the YouTuber Vosh. Uh, I just recently started watching some of his content he says he's a communist interesting to hear another perspective again just curious only um because he debated with somebody and he i debates a lot of people he debated sargon for hours and, and i have not watched the whole thing through um i really lost interest in youtube and every youtuber i just hmm. don't care anymore i never watch anybody's video i watch your videos and that's literally it wow i'm the only one left <laughs> it's like doing homework i have to watch your videos don't i i see just so you're <laughs> you're plugged into the show no you, you make a content um i don't know what it is like i don't know if it's just me but unless it's long form content that i'm really interested in i've pretty much just stopped watching youtube but mm. i have heard of this dude 
right? I think he wanted to debate Sticks, too. I know there's been pressure on Sticks to debate those guys lately. Derek Finley, uh, the world politics subreddit has fallen to the trolls. First porn gets spammed, then Hammerfall, currently JoJo. This is payback for what they did to the Donald. I don't know what any of that means. It's it's Reddit stuff. Remember how they quarantined the Donald subreddit? Is Reddit to, still a thing? People still use Reddit? I've never been active on Reddit, so I, I don't know. But I know that it's become very politically censored in recent years man uh, i don't know what happened but at some point my mom got more internet savvy than i did <laughs> and Look here we me. are i am the boomer now that's you i am the boomer yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh yeah. you don't read daily stormer every day what's wrong <laughs> zom t hood uh they moved the goalposts right out of the stadium while rewriting the rules and changing the game all the while the fans and the stands were told to put on blinders and pay again for yeah. their seats ain't that the truth yeah uh mr portnoy i can never say his name portnoy i think over at barstool had a great rant about that we'll get to that in a minute in a minute with uh elon musk as well uh let's just do a few more um uh, metal man you guys need to be nice to gretchen thornberry it's not her fault <laughs> she has a smooth brain um i do actually really feel for her uh like she clearly has an eating disorder and you know she's 17 but she could pass for nine yeah yeah, it's incredible. It's like is she is she her mom has talked about her having an eating disorder, but I saw a picture of her a few months ago that that was just shocking to me. Hmm. I, I don't even think she's she, on that how, David Hogg diet. Uh, his diet is AIDS, though. <laughs> and hers probably is, too. Yeah, really. Um, yeah. But I don't Ultimate I doubt power she's couple even started of progressive her, politics. Can David you Hogg imagine? Great tattoon bear. Uh, last one, R Z E Q D W. You're not helping me out with all of the letters. That's here. tougher to say than the communication ladies. Name. I know, right? Uh, Matt and Blonde, can you ask all my fellow fans from Austin, Texas, if one of them can organize another meetup? I need to get out of the house. Uh, sure. They should yeah. be on the email list, right? Just send an email to uh, all the people who've signed up on the website. See if you get any uh, takers. Okay. All right. Uh, and thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, real quick over on Streamlabs, then we'll get back at it. Cameron says, what do you think will come first, balkanization, civil war, or utter collapse as an empire? My money is on slow decline into obscurity. No matter what, I'll be listening to this podcast until the end. Keep up the good work, you too. Uh, my hope is for, well, what do I think will come first, or what do I hope? My hope is for an, uh, as amicable a split as possible. I'm just not convinced that we share fundamental values as a country anymore. Uh, yeah, but organization. Is I would hope, hope that for. I would hope that voluntary separation in that way would be the way it goes, as opposed to any sort of forcible separation. Yeah, fine, but I've lost faith in federalism because I so don't trust the left. So I, I don't know what lost, the solution here is. Yeah, well, the the question is the the great question on that theory is even if you could separate and live apart from one another, would they allow you to be who you are away from them? No, I don't know that they would. Their thirst for control is that strong. Anyway, uh, th thanks, Cameron. Much appreciated. Uh, Sergeant Snow Ape says self ownership is a hill worth dying on. Be prepared when they announce mandatory vaccination. Snow Ape Uprising 2020. Yeah, I can't wait to get stabbed by force with Tom Hanks's blood as uh, mixed by Bill Gates <laughs> coming next year. We'll see how that goes. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Richard Enormous says, did you guys see all the funny shit posting Twitter accounts being banned by the same lame, jealous guy named Spaz who knows Twitter's mods all because his tweets will never go viral. So he says he people go viral using criminal methods. I'm not aware of this at all. Mm -mm. I'll have to look into that story. Uh, but thank you. Redicus says Tim Pool reported that the homeowner had a text asking him to call the McMichaels to see if there was another trespass. If true, it would at least give probable cause for the citizen's arrest. Still have no evidence that he committed a felony. I had not Ooh. heard that, but well, if there was communication. If, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. If, if there was no on. evidence that he was committing a felony, then the, the citizen's arrest is illegitimate. Yeah. But if it was uh, just a trespass, then that's not exonerating at all. I mean, that just and if there if there had been communication between the homeowner and the McMichaels for them to be on watch, it again, there are kind of two questions here. One is, what is the letter of the law in terms of who's guilty and who's not as far as the law is concerned? And the other is just, how do we understand this in layman terms? Now, if the homeowner, the property owner had directed them to keep an eye on this for this sort of behavior, 
it makes it more understandable why they're doing what they're doing. That doesn't mean that it's right to the technical letter of the law, but it does mean, again, we're chipping away at this idea that they're just a bunch of racist guys hunting down black people for sport. Uh, I, the more information comes out, the less I'm inclined to believe that. Well, I mean, only the left believes that at this point. Yeah. But I still think this was wildly overzealous and that the citizen's arrest uh, probably was illegitimate. No, nothing that I've seen yet has changed my assessment last week that I I don't consider this to be valid self-defense or citizen's arrest on the part of the McMichaels. Um, but we'll see. If the lawyer has more evidence that we haven't considered, uh, I, I await that evidence, of course. And Candy Max says, still getting old... Uh, COVID-19 here and there, but not bad. Candy Max in Florida uh, at, uh, at hospitals in Florida. I dropped my teenager off at Siesta Key and people were partying it up. Bars and restaurants packed so glad I was hoping servers or I was, uh, oh, I was hoping servers and such would have a crowd and they did. We'll see in two weeks the outcome. Well, We'll get to that in a moment because Florida and Texas and Georgia were very risky with reopening. And as far as the data are playing out now, uh, it, they're not suffering drastic coronavirus spikes as a result of those reopening decisions. So thanks, Candy Mac. I'm glad to hear things are going well, and I hope they get better. Of course, I want to hop into uh, uh, Big Hero of the Week or uh, you know, at least a guy making big changes this week, and that's Elon Musk. Uh, over at well, Tesla is one of his hats, but uh, of course he is is he has been frustrated with the state of California and how they have been uh, they've been stopping his Tesla plant in Fremont in the East Bay from operating according to California's stay at home order, and it's good to see uh, pushback against a lot of these stay at home orders, not just from. Uh, of course, the, the everyday citizens in, in the protests are are awesome, and I appreciate what they're doing, and they've done a lot of pushback, and uh, and I think it's been to great effect. It's really great to see big-time power players starting to make those sorts of moves, and we'll get to some more in a minute as well, because I think this sort of civil disobedience and just people throwing up their arms and saying, no, I'm not doing this, yeah. I'm not doing this anymore in places like California, it's going to force the state of California's hand to really make some tough decisions. And that's what was interesting to watch play out this week. If you're the state of California, what do you do? Do you try to go heavy handed against Elon Musk to, to make an example of him and show the entire state that your stupid stay at home, home order will not be defied? Or do you kind of go lenient with him and allow him to defy you knowing that gives a green light to potential uh, dissidents yeah. and protesters down the road. Did you see this list of things that you're allowed to do in California this week? <laughs> the it approved was, exercise? Yeah, is that it was mean? like yeah. bordering on on satirical. I couldn't believe it. One of the things was um, uh, you can watch a, sun, a sunrise or watch a yeah. sunset. Thank you, I, state of California. I like that you can picnic only with members of your household. They're going to police the IDs, please. I want the same address on all of them. Outrageous. Okay. Anyway, the way this played out, um, so Elon Musk, of course, has been battling health authorities in Alameda County. This is East Bay, California for weeks, trying to get his Tesla plant back to operational. Last Saturday, he said he'd pulled the company's headquarters out of California and moved to Nevada or Texas. Tesla has about 20,000 employees, uh, in the Bay area. Generally half of them are at this Fremont uh, plant. Tesla had filed a lawsuit after Alameda County had refused to let the production plant open. The county saying the company didn't meet didn't meet the criteria to open. During a recent earnings call, Musk called the measures fascist. <laughs> he said, quote, if somebody wants to stay in their house, that's great. They should be allowed to stay in their house. They should not be compelled to leave. But to say that they cannot leave their house and they will be arrested if they do, this is fascist. This is not democratic. This is not freedom. Give people back their goddamn freedom. That's what Elon <laughs> Musk said. Uh, well said, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. On Monday, Elon uh, finally had enough, and he put out this tweet, and I, everybody was following how this tweet was going to play out. He said, uh, quote, Tesla is restarting production today against Alameda County rules. I will be on the line with everyone else. If anyone gets arrested, I ask only that it be me. Aww. All right. Everyone's wondering, is Elon Musk going to get arrested on principle here? 
And then I see, like I read a lot of the, a lot of the replies here and I saw people in my timeline tweeting about this too. They were claiming Elon Musk is forcing his employees to work and put themselves at risk. I mean, Come first on. of all, he's not forcing you. He pays you a wage. <laughs> so just don't go to work if you don't want to. It's yeah. A, it's con- it's a uh, consensual relationship, but he didn't even do that. He actually sent out an email to employees announcing the factory would reopen. And he said, quote, if you do not feel comfortable coming into work, you can stay home and you will be on unpaid leave. Now, granted, you're not going to get paid. It might make you ineligible for unemployment benefits because you technically still have a job, even though you're not going to work. But what what more do you want him to do short of paying people not to work? Yeah. He's not going to fire you if you make the decision that it's too risky for you and you want to stay home. I, I think that's pretty fair in terms of compromise from Elon Musk. We should trust him. He is the smartest African-American on the planet. That's right. He is South African, right? Yeah. On Tuesday, counts, right? I guess, on Tuesday, uh, Trump tweeted in support of Tesla. He said, California should let Tesla and Elon Musk open the plant now, all caps. It can be done fast and safely. And as I mentioned, all of this created a very difficult situation for the state of California. You're going to crack down <laughs> on Elon Musk and potentially shove a major employer out of the state, or you're going to cave on this and potentially give a green light to people who might follow him. Well, it looks as of this point that California has opted mostly for cave, uh, mostly, and in Alameda County specifically, they gave the green light to Tesla to operate minimally, minimally, and implement additional safety recommendations. It's not the full green light, but um, but it might as well be because what I does think, that really um, mean though? I, I didn't get a lot of details on what it means to operate minimally, and then they have some, you know, some safety uh, re- recommendations or requirements that they're making Tesla do: social distancing, wear a mask, that kind of stuff. But what what the state is actually enforcing upon them in terms of operating minimally, it seems unclear. Anyway, even if the state tried to be heavy handed in these regulations, you've now shown Elon Musk that he can apply a little pressure to you and get you to uh, redefine the rules, get you to revise the rules. So, um, yeah, I don't think that other business owners have the same kind of crazy confidence that he has. Maybe not, and they might not have the resources. They might not be as high profile. But if, for example, there's somebody in a comparable situation to Elon Musk who now wants to do the same thing, they have this precedent to cite. And that matters in terms of public opinion and potentially in a court of law, I would think. That if you could challenge this in court and say, listen, they did this with Elon Musk and they're trying to punish me for doing the same thing, that's not equal protection of the law. Yeah. So... You know, I, I know that not everyone's Elon Musk, but Elon Musk is putting himself on the line to take a stand on principle. And it's easy to say, oh, he's being greedy. Oh, he's just doing this for himself. Well, there's a hell of a lot of workers who would like to go back to work and earn a living. And by the way, Elon Musk is giving them the choice to do that or not. So good for him. I really appreciated that he did this. And uh, that that's not all in terms of Elon Musk's week. It, he, there was more after that. Uh, Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy he went viral with a Twitter rant against the nonsensically changing goalposts of lockdown this week, and then later Elon Musk chimed in. But this was um, Dave Portnoy's rant. What the fuck's going on? When did this become flatten the curve, flatten the curve, flatten the curve to we have to find a cure? or everyone's gonna die. All we've heard forever, flatten the curve, flatten the curve, make sure this hospital beds, we're there. Now all of a sudden it's like a 180. Imagine working for like a year, five years, 10 years, two decades, grinding your fingers to the bone to build the business. They're just gonna go out of business? They're gonna wake up whenever this thing ends, whenever uh, the mayors say, oh, you can go back to work? Work to what? Your company's gonna be out of business. If you told me, because of Corona, I lost Barstool. I had to go get a nine to five and start fucking over. I'd rather die of Corona, seriously. We're staying inside till there's a cure. When did that become the game? Who said we're getting the cure? That's not a guarantee. So we're just done as humans? Get the hell out of here, there's risk. We're Americans, you have to take risk. If people wanna go out, they can go out. If they wanna stay in, they stay in. We've done what you've said. You can't just midstream be like, just kidding. Flatten the curve, flatten the curve, uh-uh, cure. Good for what? him. Would I rather die of Corona or lose this show? 
<laughs> which which would I pick? Uh, that thing got, uh, as of now, 8 million plays on Twitter. Really? I think Twitter counts their views differently than like YouTube, but anyway. it's always great on Tucker too. 270,000 likes and uh, 88,000 retweets. So it's, it's got plenty of traction. So he'll and be banned. And like two days. I'm surprised it's still up, but it's still up at this point. Oh, <gasps> you know who got banned from YouTube? Sorry. Who? A total aside. Um, that newt. Uh, oh, what is his last name? Oh, the doctor mm -hmm. banned for what? Medical misinformation. The same thing that those other doctors were banned. Did they for. ban the? Did they ban him, or did they ban that episode on that channel? I'm pretty sure they banned him, but this was just information from oh my, my mom God. before the show. She's like, "I'm sure you've already heard of this." I was like, Ugh. "If people hadn't heard, he was he was another dissident. What was he? German doctor? He was yeah. European, but he 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 had an episode on this um, pandemic perspective series weeks ago that was about herd immunity and that was about the importance of um, of being outside when there's viral danger." Not very controversial, but a lot of common sense things he was saying. He was French, but really? Something like that. Oh. I don't know. Huh. Uh, yeah, it was a fantastic video. It had just tons and tons of views. That whole series is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Elon Musk replied to Dave Portnoy and said, Well said, please run for office. The politicians and unelected bureaucrats who stole our liberty should be tarred, feathered, and thrown out of town. To which I say, uh, go on, I'm listening. Uh, and, and people were <laughs> people were urging them both to run for office, so Dave Portnoy put out a t-shirt design that's uh, Portnoy Musk 2024, which, uh, wow. which would, would be an Wouldn't interesting that be ticket. Something? That'd be nice. I, I Again, people of influence people uh I, I just appreciate that people of influence are coming out and saying things it, it's insane to me that it takes courage to say common sense things like guess what every day has risk you'll have to assess that risk for yourself and carry on the reason these guys are in the position that they are is because they took a little risk they built something of value they took risk they built something of value that's america you don't have to take the risk that they did. You can sit on your damn couch all you want, whether you're afraid of the virus or you're afraid of the financial risk, you're afraid of whatever else. That's fine. Skag just wants your grandma, you, listener, your grandma Perfect. to die. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, so in, anyway, the point is all of this is trending in a particular direction. Nobody who, who sees this sort of stuff and starts to get the ball rolling in their head about realizing this is all a bunch of crap and we've all been duped as we'll get to in a moment, uh, is going to go back in the other direction. Nobody's thinking, ah, I don't know, more lockdowns are a better idea right now. Anyway, yep. uh, Elon Musk just a few hours ago tweeted out only take the red pill with a rose emoji. <laughs> and um, I don't know if the rose emoji is a reference to democratic socialists. Democratic socialists use the rose as a symbol. I don't know if that's what he's getting at, uh, but Elon Musk is urging people to take the red pill uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see how this works out, but I, I'm glad to see some civil disobedience bearing some fruit. We'll get into some uh, victories in court in a moment, too. It in the was state fairly of obvious from the get-go, though, so I, I kind of can't believe that it um, that it took so long. What was obvious? The, uh, the faults in the lockdown mentality? The transparency of the oligarchy using this as a power grab mm. based on, you know, dubious information that was released limited information yeah about a virus that clearly had a low case fatality rate it's like everybody's like oh my god blah, blah, blah. i'm um, still going to maintain a, a better late than never philosophy I, I don't want to purity test people and say oh you 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 were too late in getting here how dare you we've been saying this for weeks or something whenever uh, people come to ideas that i like and i agree with i'm going to praise them regardless of whether i think I, they I took agree. too long or not um, but still, as a society, I'm disappointed. So my mom just sent me they from the Daily Stormer. Uh, they <sighs> took down that video. That video? Yeah. Just that one or the entire channel, I wonder? Uh, it looks like this that video, but I can't read this whole I wonder what was story. all of those. That entire series is dissident doctors. So I wonder yeah. what they found objectionable about that specific one. It probably had the most views. It had 1.3 million views. Wow. Yeah, the series is good. Hopefully it's up elsewhere. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> The last thing I want to say about uh, California before we're done on this topic, it's just a quick aside, but did you see this footage of uh, inmates in prison in LA trying to infect each other with coronavirus? 
This was released by the L.A. County Sheriff this this week, uh, the footage and his analysis of it. You see, that's a hot water dispenser there. And you can see the red circle. And they're going to start passing the hot water um, bottle to each other. You see the handoff? They're going to be sharing swigs from the same bottle of water. And they, they're also use that styrofoam cup. And they're going to share the styrofoam cup. Same process they did with the water bottle. But now they're also sniffing out of a common mask. It's sad to think that someone deliberately tried to expose themselves to COVID-19. Wow, even the prisoners are more based about risk assessment. They're like, <laughs> uh, would I rather get this low fatality virus and get let out of jail? Yeah, that sounds like a sweet trade-off. And is it sad or is it totally predictable given the incentive structure you yeah. have established? Yeah, exactly. According to the LA Times reporting here, eventually 30 people in the two modules where the videos were recorded tested positive for the virus and two have since been released, uh, <laughs> said Assistant Sheriff Bruce Chase. So mm. apparently the scheme worked for at least two of them. Yeah. If you set up the precedent that having coronavirus will get you released, it stands to reason they're going to try to get coronavirus in the same way if you set up people to be paid more on unemployment than they make at their regular job. They're not going back to work. Yeah, it's almost as if people respond to incentives. Yeah. It's, so it's not sad. It's a predictable outcome of the yeah. policies that the state of California has been pursuing. Anyway, moving along uh, from sort of a, a civil disobedience win to what was a political win, I guess. You tell me because this thing has gotten complicated and technical in terms of what the governor's trying to do. But... The the brief version is the California or the the Wisconsin Supreme Court struck down the state's stay at home order this week. Yeah, uh, the state's highest court sided with Republican lawmakers Wednesday in a decision that curbed the power of Democratic Governor Tony Evers. Is that how you say it? I don't know if it's Evers or Evers. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's Evers. Um, to act unilaterally during public health emergencies, it was a four three decision. Um, the ruling immediately lifts all restrictions on businesses and gatherings imposed by the administration's orders, but keeps in place the closure of schools until fall, which I don't know that really matters that much because mm. it wouldn't it be summer break for everybody in like a hot second here anyway. Yeah. Um, it comes after Evers had already begun lifting some restrictions because the spread of the virus has slowed. I looked into that. Not really true. Like There was mm. not a lot of lifting going on. Um, so he said, Evers, Republican legislators convinced four members of the Supreme Court to throw the state into chaos. <laughs> Republicans need to own that chaos. Ooh, I know. chaotic in Wisconsin, is it? I saw the videos of irresponsible young people drinking at bars and eating food at restaurants. Yeah. Outrageous. Uh, less than 24 hours after the state Supreme Court quashed the Department of Health Service extension of the state's safer at home order, safer at home order. Uh, Evers moved to restore his emergency powers and the powers of the health agency, noting that the state justices determined the extension was invalid because the agency issued the directive as an order and without consultation with the legislator. So he's just trying to like find some workaround. Here. Okay, so it's it's a uh, it's like a process. They struck it down on this kind of process technicality. Right. Um, yeah. He tasked health officials with creating a rule which requires public input and consultation with lawmakers. So this sounds like bureaucratic horse shit. Um, Evers took the first step Thursday when he released the framework for the rule change, a so-called statement of scope. And it's going to be put forth for public input starting tomorrow. And it requires consultation with lawmakers, but yeah. not that language implies not full legislative approval. Yeah. Okay. So we're just trying to, we're trying to go around the technicalities. He's trying, he's not taking the L basically. He's, he's trying mm -hmm. to implement the same thing through a different process on technical grounds such that he, he, he has the authority to do what he's been doing. It's Meanwhile, okay. Does everybody feel safer? You feel safer? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see. Does Wisconsin, it does Wisconsin descend into Corona hell like the likes of uh, Georgia, Florida, Texas? We'll get to in a moment. Uh, they're fine. People have been eating there at restaurants and bars. They've been going to the beaches. They're fine. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if he's right about this chaos. It's but, so uh, ridiculous. If my husband cannot be in the delivery room with me, I am going to lose my mind. That is bullshit. I mean, what, what <sighs> would you do? Would you consider like a home birth or something? No. Hmm. I will not do a home birth. Um, 
I've actually been following the story. This uh, this chick from Real Housewives had a home birth because she was scared of COVID and her baby was way bigger than she thought it was going to be. Hmm. And it got stuck in the birth canal and then the baby died. Oh, if man. She, if she would yeah. have been in a hospital, she probably would have been fine. I'm not changing my birth plan at all, but because I live in Idaho. Um, but I mean, I have a feeling that this is definitely going to affect uh, we'll see. Know, the way I would only be, one uh, person can be with you. So, you know, no doula. My mom can't be there. Uh, oh, they are saying that. So so as of now, they're saying he can be there. Uh, yes, but I also heard from this labor and delivery nurse that you have to take the COVID test and then it takes four hours for the COVID test to come through. Mm -hmm. um, so not only do I have to like wait long enough in my, when I go into labor as a first time mom, but I also have to not wait too long because I'm pretty sure that if my COVID test hasn't come back, that my husband can't be there and everybody has to be in like a hazmat suit. And then if I test positive, are they going to try to take my baby for like two weeks? <laughs> God, I, uh, I, I, it, I don't want to, I don't know. It might be me who's the most, the most hoping for a healthy, happy delivery. I don't want to hear any crazy, like, I, I, I fear what will happen if there are any complications. People should this, be afraid. In this process. Like, I will have an erratic and violent outcome if somebody tries to take my baby. For yeah, no doubt. Time. And I can't say that you're even, I can't say that that impulse is, is wrong. I think we're on weird, unprecedented times where we're willing to violate people's rights in that way. Yeah. So hopefully it doesn't happen. And uh, I, I wouldn't hope that would happen to anybody. I'm just saying, I especially don't have, hope it happens to you because I know the sort of, uh, obsessive imp, compulsive the sort disorder, of passionate <laughs> reaction you will have. <laughs> uh, uh, how do you, I'm hoping that they that they have uh, kind of their policies nailed down, and my midwives have been great and very mm. supportive through all of this. Um, but you know, it's just like they they've forgot in the fear of COVID, they've forgotten that there are other patients out there. Um, yeah. Also, I have a friend who um, is a, a oh my god, a cardiologist. I was like a heart doctor, and he said that he's. Uh, he told my friend that he's been um, dealing with like really, really severe cases recently because people aren't coming in for the preliminary signs of heart attacks. Yeah. They're only coming in when they're like, I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, this is the obvious outcome of this. It's just like everybody's just been so stupid. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get into some more of those, uh, some of those consequences in a minute because we got some more interesting facts on uh, on whether we should believe the coronavirus data or not. Anyway, but uh, finishing up on some of the, the crackdowns here, I mentioned Carl Menke uh, in a video this week. This is the Owasso, Michigan barber who's defying Gretchen Whitmer's orders to shut down his barber shop. So he, he also had a momentary victory in court. He had opened his shop in defiance of the order. He won in court, uh, defeating an attempt from the state to shut down his shop until the case is litigated. He had also been cited with a pair of misdemeanors by the state. Well, on Tuesday, the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs suspended Carl's license. They just took away his, his barber license. And then later in the week, they delivered him papers to appear in court. So on Friday, Carl's shop had a note on the window that said uh, he's closed Friday for court hearings. Carl is still fighting the governor, saying he believes her orders are illegal, saying suspending his license without due process is a police state tactic, and he'll continue fighting in court. For now, he says he is voluntarily closing his shop while it's necessary for him to be in court, not that he's being forced to or not that he won't reopen. So just so there's some clarification on, on why the shop was closed on Friday and what to expect. So we'll monitor that case ongoing. And then... Um, I wanted to catch up with this story too. In prior weeks, we of course have been very critical of police officers enforcing dubious orders. And we've asked when they're going to remember their oath. And when we criticize those cops, I also think we have an obligation to recognize and praise cops who are doing and saying the sort of things that we're talking about. So a cop in Seattle has now been placed on administrative leave this is Greg Anderson. He's a veteran of the Port of Seattle Police Department. On May 5th, he posted this nine-minute video to Instagram asking officers if they are doing the right thing, and the video went viral. Here's what he had to say. I've seen 
officers nationwide enforcing tyrannical orders against the people. Every time I turn, I look to the internet, I'm seeing people arrested or cited for going to church, for traveling on the roadways, for going surfing, opening their businesses, going to the park with their families. We need to start looking at ourselves as officers and thinking, is what I'm doing right? Regardless of where you stand on the coronavirus, we don't have the authority to do those things to people just because a mayor or a governor tells you otherwise. We don't get to violate people's constitutional rights because somebody in our chain of command tells us otherwise. It's not how this country works. I'm afraid that these actions are going to wake a sleeping giant, i.e. the American people. I think what is gonna happen if this continues is we're gonna see bloodshed in the streets, okay? I don't want to see bloodshed in the streets on either side of this coin. I don't wanna see fellow officers get injured or killed, and I certainly don't wanna see citizens get injured or killed. Spot on, right on. I think to his point too, it's so tense, and we're, we're treading in territory we've so rarely treaded in our country's history, that imagine a case like the Owasso, or not the, uh, Odessa bar that we talked about last week with all those guys armed outside of the bar and the police sending a SWAT unit to go bust them up. All it takes is one Waco mistake. Whoops, we accidentally, we had an accidental discharge and let, let loose some automatic fire. One person gets shot either way, by the way, like civilian on police, police on civilian. You could start very serious violent conflict on the basis of one incident. Yeah, really. You Our guys want to create that. a bunch of Timothy McVeigh's? Want to yeah. do that? And and that's what this cop is talking about. And, mm -hmm. and so I appreciated what he had to say about the nature of our constitutional rights and about the consequences for not treating them with the sincerity that they deserve and the respect that they deserve. So for his troubles, uh, he has been relieved of his duties at the Port of Seattle Police Department. He's been placed on administrative leave pending investigation. Uh, Seattle, a port what? of Seattle police confirms this with a statement on their website saying he violated the department's policy on the use of social media. Anderson apparently refused to take down the post when ordered to. Uh, he says he was informed by the department and his union that the reason for termination was due to insubordination for refusing to take down his Instagram video. He says, quote, I had received a message from command saying, wow, Greg, what a powerful message. We fully agree a hundred percent well done and and that was uh and, and that was a relief for me uh he says and then quote fast forward three hours later i got another phone call from my command hey greg the video is up to four hundred thousand views it's time to pull the plug on this thing officer anderson does have a gofundme up it's currently when i looked a few hours ago four hundred and twenty thousand dollars four hundred twenty thousand bucks for legal action and other, other expenses related to his uh, termination or at least pending termination. He is a father of three. Now, uh, I will say that I, I understand, uh, from the police department perspective, I understand why they have rules against political posting and all that. I'm yeah, not fine. Even... This would not be equally enforced if he came out and was like, please help us by calling 911 when you hear racist blah fucking blah. They wouldn't have said anything about it. They would have been fine. And by yeah. the way, his job is breaking up bum fights, like trying to, well, to, to um, not step on needles. And like, is can Port you imagine Seattle, the riffraff he has to deal with? Port, is Port of Seattle Police different from Seattle City Police? I, I, I don't know if they're the same force, but I'm going to look it up. I don't know what his job is, if it's specific to the ports as opposed to city duties or what. But regardless, I'm sure he has to deal with a whole heap of bullshit and he yeah. has a right to his opinion. Yeah, I, I'm what I'm trying to say is I, I'm not that mad at the police department. I understand why they have the rules that they do. I'm I just want to say that I appreciate that this police officer is willing to stand on principle and he's willing to put his ass on the line for that principle. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And it looks so like I, they're I, different departments. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just glad that he will put his livelihood on the line before he'll do the sort of things that we've observed cop, cops doing in the last few weeks. I just want to appreciate him for that and, and give him recognition because uh, this is exactly the sort of thing I'm hoping to hear from police officers yeah. going forward. And then 
pe people are going to see this and they're going to be deterred from becoming cops, like good quality, sensible people like this, because they're like, oh, well, I can't have my opinions. And so it just ends up with a bunch of ineffectual leftists or people with tyrannical personalities. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never thought of being a police officer in my life, but at a time like now where you think, okay, one wrong step and I'm going to be smeared as a racist and my family's going to be targeted. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I'm going to be asked to go violate people's fundamental rights because some idiot mayor told me so. Mm -hmm. I can't, yeah, I can't imagine it's an attractive job for people of, of upstanding character and pure motives these days, which is a shame. It's a, it's a bummer. You go listen to his entire, uh, his entire video. He talks about declining trust in police and why some of that is uh, understandable because of the way that all of this stuff has developed. Just outrageous. Yeah. But good for him. I, I, I hope he does well. I hope he's able to find something better, and I hope uh, his family is taken care of, of course. Uh, all right. You want to take a quick – I got more coronavirus political items, but uh, you want to take a quick break before we hop into those? Um, I do have to go to the bathroom. All right. I can take a break while you step out. And I don't remember the last person. I think it was Robert. Something. Let me find this. Really okay. Quick. Well, I'll catch up on Streamlabs and see if I can figure it out. Um, let me find, actually. Okay, Robert Norman. Okay. BRB. Over on DLive, Crypto Crook says, uh, love you, have some shekels. Thanks for the sanity safe space. Please excuse my corona burps. Blonde is beautiful today. Well, I'll have to let her know when she gets back. And thanks for supporting the show. Uh, let's see. Over on Streamlabs, Tomb at Tross says, if, if Democrats understood that people respond to incentives they wouldn't have half their current platform. That's probably true. Richard Enormous says, uh, everyone, when you wear jeans and your sh your schmeat itches, do you pinch or scratch? Uh, I guess I haven't thought about that. I guess I'm probably more of a, I mean, if it itches, I'm going to scratch. But if it's in need of an adjustment, that's not really a scratching occasion. Um, okay, where did Blonde say she left off in the super chat? I'm going to have to try to figure it out here. Let's see if I can. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for your patience. Let's see. Uh... Yeah, I don't know where we left off. <laughs> uh... Okay, I think I found it. Let's see. DJ DJ says, I'm subbed to over 850 YouTube creators, and this show and Matt's channel are probably my favorites. Good day from Washington. Well, thanks. That's very high praise. I appreciate it. Um, Richard Norman said, I live in New Jersey, and I'm tired of our dictatorial governor. Take my money as a way to stick it to him. Well, well thank you. Very much appreciated. It. it took me a while to find where we left off, but I think we're on Blippity Blue now. Um, Blippity Blue. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have giving you more information before I left. You probably did. I just forgot. Uh, hey, y'all just got back from going out to dinner for the first time in months. So ready for this to be over. I hear ya. Um, Boogeyman 917. Thanks again for your sane voices of reason. Cheers. We try. Freddy Sauce. Random thought. Any chance the virus closure of the universities will lead to young persons getting a less puss, getting a little less pussified? Maybe. Or will the economic collapse make the dream of um, burning more? I don't know. I think that th this might be the end of of uh, university education in America. The campus is mostly fantasy land. It's not the real world. So anything that puts young people more into a real world setting, I think will probably push them away from that sort of Bernie mentality, not toward it. But yeah, we'll see. yeah. Um, unless there's like debt forgiveness and such. Yeah. Uh, chain fire. My wife and I regret we cannot watch the show live tonight because we're having a baby right now. Please wow. welcome our first son, Stephen Glenn. Congratulations. That's so sweet. Big congrats and thanks for supporting the show. Thank I am you not so gonna be much. Niggardly. Congrats. She's doing all the hard work and he's like, hold on, I got a super chat. Well, <laughs> she's like, why did you do this to me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ryan Russell, thanks guys for all the content I get over here in Japan. It warms my cockles. Knowing that nothing has changed back home really reinforces my move here. Is that a typo? Uh, I don't know. Or sarcasm, because a lot has changed here. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, no armed boogaloo here, though. Yeah, but the Japanese are an orderly people. An orderly people. Number one, Asian. 
Number the one premier Asian. Asian culture, never forget. They are. And yeah. keep hating the Chinese. Um, something kind of <laughs> other. Speaking of virus and law, I think it's time we revisit the California thing. It's okay to hide your HIV status when you sleep with another person. Saying it's okay. Yeah, really. I, um, in fairness, I have to recognize when that story came out, it's only a misdemeanor in Montana and many other states too, which surprised me. Yeah. You can intentionally transmit HIV in this state and many others, and it's a misdemeanor. Uh, Neon Firefly, my job is opening back up and I couldn't be happier to get, be getting back to work. Thank you guys for providing much needed normalcy during quarantine and for always being a reliable sanity safe space. Well, thanks. We are usually a reliable sanity More space. More reliable than many network news channels, Maybe which is a low bar, but hey, it's pretty good for a duct tape production. Let's do two more Robin S. I hope you guys are doing well. Congratulations on your baby blonde. Thank you. Matt, remember when I sent you a Trump shirt? Now I get mail from them at my address with your name on it. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's the thing. I think my dad, my dad sent Trump like five bucks or something, and uh, and now he gets nothing but but spam email from every Republican or Trump cause. Yeah, really. In the history of the world, that's how they get you. Um, one more is Metal Man. It's time to enter someone's. Pro it's wrong to enter someone's property. That was sorry. That was a bad misspeak. Uh, someone's private property without permission unless you're curious or like super thirsty or whatever that's a valid point yeah I, okay and and i say i say this not rhetorically i say this with genuine curiosity to the construction site explorer enthusiasts among our audience of which there are many uh, a lot of people don't think that there's anything suspicious or wrong with that behavior at all as we've talked about in detail last sunday and even wednesday a little bit how many of you have ever like discovered a water source at the construction site and then returned to it to consume the water there? Yeah. Or... Next time I go on a 12 mile jog in my Timberlands, I'm going to go back to the same water source that I discovered the first time. Or is that a known thing among the jogging community? If you go, cause I assume if you go for a lot of miles, you might have to have water break spots along the way, but are construction sites known for that sort of thing? I think it, we're really reaching here. I'm actually seriously inquiring because that's the information being presented by the homeowner's lawyer. And I'm not, I just want to know, is that a thing? Like that's not something I've ever done, but is that a thing that people do? No, that's crazy town. Oh, and I forgot to mention at the top of the show, my parents are texting me about it. They went to a protest in San Diego and there were a ton of people there. Uh, I looked at the pictures. It was like mostly boomers and a lot of boomers. Hmm. Um, some really encouraging signs and people looked really pissed off. Good. I have San some Diego, more. right? Did you see the, uh, well, we'll get to it in a moment, but the San Diego County supervisor has done his look at the data there and said, yeah, there's like six actual yeah. coronavirus deaths here. I'll talk about it in a minute. I think that somebody actually was holding that sign. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yep. Well, um, actually we'll get that to, we'll get to that very shortly here. Cause I want to talk about, again, more information comes out to support the idea uh, that we've been we've been duped a little bit about the statistics and about lockdown effectiveness and about basically the entire mainstream narrative on all of this. And uh, it starts, of course, with the idea that, uh, as I mentioned, Florida and Texas and Georgia and all these other states that were supposedly so high risk in opening up that they were crazy and they were going to see a big spike in coronavirus cases and deaths. Remember they said... Um, Brian Kemp in Georgia, the governor there, he was doing an experiment in human sacrifice that was published a few weeks ago. What? Yeah, there was one media characterization that said he was doing an experiment in human sacrifice. Who said that? The CNN. I forget the publication, but it was, you know, your typical left-wing rags. Anyway, we're now removed enough from those places starting to open up that we have a few weeks worth of data to analyze. Are they, nice. in fact, if we go with the theory that this thing has something like a two week incubation period, whatever. We have roughly two weeks of data since they opened up to evaluate those sorts of doomsday predictions. According to the uh, data analysis from Axios here, sorry, I'm struggling. <laughs> According to the uh, data analysis from Axios, Georgia over the last week in terms of new coronavirus cases down 12%. That was a failed experiment in human sacrifice, I suppose. Florida, same time period, seven day average of new cases down over the last week, 14%. Texas, seven day average of new cases 
modest increase, 4%. But again, I'll emphasize all of these places, virtually every state in the country has expanded testing capability over the last few weeks and months. Right. So this is what we're seeing with more tests, not less declining cases, more tests. This is not, this is not what we were sold. We were told imagine how much they've actually declined. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, we're not seeing the states that have been so irresponsible and reckless experiencing the sort of doomsday predictions that we were uh, told were inevitable. Now I mentioned San Diego. So in, in uh, San Diego County, County supervisor, Jim Desmond said this week that San Diego has only six pure solely coronavirus deaths. He appeared on a podcast and he, uh, the County's official tally is 194 coronavirus deaths. That's it. That's a low number, even if it's accurate. Yes. But he says, quote, we've unfortunately had six pure solely coronavirus deaths, six out of 3.3 million people. I mean, what number are we trying to get to with those odds? It's incredible. We want to be safe and we can do it. But unfortunately, it's more about control than getting the economy going and keeping people safe. Uh, Desmond did not elaborate on the specifics as far as I've seen. Um, explaining what the difference between those six and the others were, but he was, uh, but um, a public health officer, Dr. William, Wilma Wooten was asked about his comments at a press briefing on Wednesday. And she took issue with Desmond's statement saying, quote, their life is no less valuable than someone's life who does not have underlying medical conditions. This being, so she's making a distinctions between people with other conditions and not, this is not just San Diego. This is how it is done throughout the entire nation in terms of identifying who has died of COVID-19. Well, the issue is not whether those lives had value. The issue is whether coronavirus was the true cause of those deaths. Yeah. And by extension, whether those deaths were in fact preventable by what we've been doing with these lockdowns, nobody's saying ha, they died and it doesn't matter. Screw them. Exactly. Yeah. That's not the issue here. The issue is understanding the facts of the matter. Meanwhile, (laughs) we've gone over some of these insane stories of deaths attributed to coronavirus, people being hit in the head, uh, people who have every disease under the sun, but they happen to die with coronavirus. So it counts as a coronavirus death. This might be the most uh, insane stretch I've read to date. A Colorado man died in the town of Cortez, supposedly due to coronavirus, or at least he was counted in the state's total. The local coroner disputes the man's death being included in the coronavirus total since the toxicology report showed the man died with a 0.55 blood alcohol content. Yikes. Seven times the legal limit. And actually, um, it's pretty impressive considering 0.3 is yeah. considered lethal. Yeah. 0.55, wow. If you think this guy is isolated... Uh, probably not, or at least, uh, only in his drinking ability is he isolated, but not in terms of the way that Colorado has been counting their, their deaths. The Colorado health department has now changed their methodology to distinguish between people who have died from Corona and people who died with Corona. The shift led to the state's official count being lowered from 1150 to 878 down 24% simply by reviewing death certificates and making sure that coronavirus was the attributed cause. So Colorado numbers declining. And again, these, these are examples that get repeated across the country. You can call it cherry picking, but the reality is there's this sort of, this sort of issue happening in virtually every state. I don't know about the 0.55 blood alcohol guy. That might be a Colorado (laughs) only thing, but questions about how we count these sort of things persist. Meanwhile, of course, uh, in terms of the economic numbers this week, uh, another, well, another week, another 3 million Americans filing for unemployment. That's 36.5 million Americans out of work in the past eight weeks. Again, the obvious common sense safety first solution to all of our problems. 22.4% of the March labor force is now off the job. But don't worry, I'm sure it'll be a quick and easy fix once Corona has been magically that is erased. That so crazy. We figured it out last week. What is it, 3.1 million this week that lost their jobs? And that's the lowest since the massive spike in, in late March. But we're still at historic pace. We're and still at historic pace. there are 157 highs. million in the workforce. Math is hard, guys. So that's an increase in two, of 2% in unemployment. 
which is so that would i don't know if it's in the article here that would put us at what like 16 percent, 17 percent, something like that between twenty thousand and eighty thousand estimated additional mm -hmm. deaths last week it was reported 14.7 unemployment uh 14.7 percent unemployment rate goldman sachs is saying 25 percent unemployment rate expected uh for the may rate so 25 and what was it at before 3.8 Eight? something yeah historically low like uh, between three and four 3.8 let's say that's an increase in 21.2 percent unemployment and then the estimate is between 10 and thousand and 40 thousand people so on the low end that's 212 thousand additional deaths well that's only if you estimate. believe the experts at harvard who did this study crazy that is <laughs> common so sense crazy. safety first and hey don't worry nancy Pelosi's gonna fix it all there's been speculation i don't know if you saw pelosi's eyebrows this week looks like she might have had a facelift a non-essential facelift during the stay-at-home orders and she must have gone to florida to get it done or texas i assume yeah anyway i, I would say doing a facelift on a corpse would be deemed non-essential <laughs> So Nancy Pelosi is here to save the day with more federal handouts from the money printer. She, the, she in the house passed another $3 trillion or uh, $3 trillion bill for the so-called heroes act. This is another hodgepodge of totally unrelated pet projects and pretty much limitless federal spending. Pelosi had aimed for recurring $2,000 stimulus checks to Americans, basically $2,000 payroll. You could, you just keep getting $2,000 checks from the government. But they didn't get that in the passage of this bill. The bill, a separate bill actually, aims to cover 100% of workers' income up to $90,000 a year. Anyway, none of this really matters. It only passed the House along mostly partisan lines. Mitch McConnell doesn't even plan to pass it, even if he did. Trump said it's dead on arrival if it gets to his desk. Bottom line, the only solution is people getting back to work. Not more funny money from the Fed's printer. But in terms of some other political developments this week, did you hear Andrew Cuomo call it the European virus? That is... <laughs> that He's briefing, Italian, right? Yeah, maybe that's why he wants to protect the Italians. Mm. Uh, or no, he's implicating the Italians. Implicating Never mind. Italians. Yeah, sorry. Maybe, why does he, yeah, why does he want to? He's, he's doing a disservice to his own people. Anyway, Andrew Cuomo called the coronavirus the European virus, an apparent jab at Trump uh, and, the, and other people for calling it uh, the Chinese virus. Yes, we have more cases than anyone else. Yes, we had this European virus attack us and nobody expected it. Okay. European virus attacked us. Uh, I mean, the thing is, he, he's taking a jab at Trump there, but Chinese virus is not a jab it's factually true european virus is not factually true yes the, the new york the, the virus came to new york through italy and europe as far as we understand but it did not originate in europe nobody claims that so why in god's name would you call it a european virus it doesn't matter we everybody should stop defending their claims that they're not racist just stop defending yourself it just doesn't say matter. yes i am yeah cool whatever i, I mean does it doesn't matter to you if calling it the chinese virus is racist who gives a shit I wish Trump uh, would have said that to Weijia Zhang. Say, yes, I am targeting you because you're Chinese. And uh, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, really. <laughs> so uh, recall, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Weijia Zhang is this CBS reporter. At the end of March or mid-March, she posted this claim on Twitter. This morning, a White House official referred to coronavirus as the Kung flu to my face. <laughs> Makes me wonder what they're calling it behind my back, which, of course, invited everyone to speculate what it is called <laughs> behind her back. You can read through the replies and get filled in on that. Anyway, uh, that was ridiculous at the time, but she's seemingly aiming for the sequel, pressing Trump at a press conference this week on why he compares our testing numbers to other countries, why he makes it a contest. And Trump responded saying, well, ask China. And she insinuated that's, that, she's, that Trump is targeting her because she's Chinese. said many times that the U.S. is doing far better than any other country when it comes to testing. Yes. Why does that matter? Why is this a global competition to you if everyday Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. 
And maybe that's a question you should ask China. <laughs> Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. Sir, why are you saying that to me specifically? I'm telling you, I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question That's like that. That's not a nasty question. Please question. go ahead. Why does it matter? When okay, uh, anybody else? Please go ahead in the back, please. I have, to, I have two questions. No, it's okay. But we'll you pointed to me. I have two questions, Mr. Next, <laughs> next please. But you, did, you called on me. I did, and you didn't respond, and now I'm calling on... Sorry, I just the young lady in the back, please. I just wanted to let my call ah. finish, okay. but can I ask you Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate but it. Thank you very much. Would you tell them he just ended the press conference. God, he should have been like, can somebody uh, get this bat-eating wench out of here? <laughs> Go eat a bat and shut the hell up. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he should have said. And put your mask back on. <laughs> why are you saying that specifically to me? I don't know, because you asked the question. You asked the question. Maybe that's why. To Wei Zhang, has Trump never called it the Chinese virus or blamed China to non-Asian or non-Chinese reporters? He's, that's his default answer to almost anything. Ask China. Anything coronavirus related? Ask China. China's fault. I'm not even saying that critically. Like, uh, yeah, it is Chinese, uh, China's fault. That's the origin and they covered it up. But anyway, um, the, what you'll notice about reporters like her and like Jim Acosta is they have this. They all this, secretly want to bang Trump. Well, maybe it's that. I don't know. But it's they an have alpha this. Move. They have to make themselves the story. They have to make themselves a hero or victim or both. Yeah. They. I got news for you. Wei Zhang. Nobody gives a shit about Wei Zhang. Nobody gives. Nobody gives a shit at all. We don't care. We don't care about your personal problems. We don't care about you personally. What we care about is getting information from the president from the white house about what's going on with the virus and about what we can expect and about what we should do. I also don't care about that to be fair. Well, but you, that's the point of the press conference. If you're tuning into the press conference, that's the point of it. No, it's not, people are only tuning in for the spectacle. Well, do, do we're not you actually, getting any real information. Do from you the actually white house. want this? Do you want Wei Zhang to be doing this sort of thing? Uh, totally, because it gives us content for our podcast. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> well, in a different way. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is she has a duty to the public as a reporter, and that is to get information that is useful or helpful to the public. In no way is Wei Zhang victimization helpful or useful to the public. It may be entertaining, but it is not relevant to the coronavirus pandemic. That's yeah, but I, I think that you have an antiquated view of what reporters really do. You think They're about pure WWE wrestlers at this point or what? Totally. This is yeah. just a media spectacle. They serve no real purpose for the general public. I mean, I never I don't even remember the last time that like a reporter broke a story. Maybe Catherine Herridge yeah. that I was truly interested in Project Veritas periodically. Um, but, like I'm not going to get any information from Batwoman over here, you know? <laughs> Try as she might. Well, yeah, fair enough. How about Greta Thunberg on CNN? No. You get information from her? No. That was a good transition. CNN was widely mocked this week for hosting Greta Thunberg during its coronavirus facts and fears town hall. She donated $100,000 to UNICEF and claims she may have had coronavirus, I guess. But other than that, she, of course, has no connection or any sort of connection, uh, qualification to speak on the issue. The interview was about as boring as you'd imagine with the hosts and, um, and Greta insisting the virus is dangerous to kids and we all have to trust the experts uh, like we have to trust the experts on climate change. Anyway, I keep saying Greta Thunberg because that's the way that Anderson Cooper says it. Yeah. Our next guest, uh, Greta Thunberg, recently gave $100,000 she had received for her climate change activism to UNICEF. The thinking early on, as you know, Greta, was that this virus largely affect, really uh, affected adults, but we are learning more and more about how this can affect children as well. It's sort of a myth right now that children are not being, being affected by this virus, and that is, of course, very wrong. Children both do get this disease and, and they also spread it. One of the things I've seen you talk about online too is just how important it is to listen to experts and listen to science. Yes, yes, exactly. People are starting to realize that we are actually depending on science and that we need to listen to scientists and experts. And I, I really hope that we 
that that stays and that's that also um, is is for for other crises such as the climate crisis and the environmental crisis that we actually understand that we have to listen to to the scientists well Greta Thunberg uh, we really appreciate uh, your time Wow oh, very insightful yeah. expertise on display from an just... anorexic 17 year old <laughs> I feel so bad for her though. She's just getting pimped out by everybody. She's gonna get spit up. It's gonna mm. be yeah. A Talk to her in ten years. It might be interesting. Life. Yeah. Well, trust the science and the experts as always. Uh, but as always with science and experts, what science and which experts? Because there are plenty of scientific sources that say that kids likely don't play a role in transmitting the virus. They don't play a role in carrying the virus to the vulnerable. And we know statistically. They are not vulnerable to the virus themselves. They do not die from the virus itself. Almost never. I think we're still potentially in single digit under 20 deaths across the country. If not, it's it's very low, comparatively extremely low, extremely rare. And yeah, there is this strange inflammatory illness happening across the country uh, that they suspect. Kawasaki's maybe, disease. They say it may be linked to coronavirus. We don't even know that. And as far as I understand, that's a few hundred cases country, yeah. uh, nationwide. We're still not talking about a I'm a skeptical about thing this there. claim. I'm also highly skeptical about the claim that, that it does this, uh, all this pulmonary and brain damage uh, and heart damage uh, in asymptomatic cases. It's like that's typically not how viruses um, respond. They don't just like wreak havoc on your body while you're totally asymptomatic. Mm. The body is designed to give you signals when things are going wrong. Sure. Um, and that was all, uh, I don't want to get caught up on that because, you know, that was all very boring. And it got more interesting, though, when Anderson Cooper got defensive. So there was a lot of people on Twitter making fun of the promo for this. We're going to have expert Greta Thunberg on yeah. to tell us about uh, coronavirus. And they got mocked on Twitter and Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump Jr. ripped them. And so Anderson Cooper responded to Twitter and to Donald Trump Jr. And uh, he said that this was all the criticism was incorrectly characterized. Apparently someone with a blue check on Twitter saw the initial ad and was outraged and claimed that we had booked Greta Thunberg to be an expert on a coronavirus panel with other health experts. Then of course, Donnie Trump Jr. jumped into this, which is weird because I thought he was allegedly running whatever remains of the Trump organization. I mean, shouldn't that be like a really busy job since it's, you know, allegedly such a great big company? Then someone who's apparently a reporter at Forbes uh, wrote an article about this alleged controversial booking. And the New York Post today, wrote about it as well, claiming we were having her on a panel, which is what the first person on Twitter was claiming, which was made up. It was made up then, it was made up today in the post. And in case you think this is some sort of cover up, look at our past ads for shows. They're exactly the same. We had Alicia Keys a few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago, debuting Why? a video for a song yeah. she released for Frontline Workers. Nobody thought she was on a panel. Look, here's a promo for last week's town hall we had with journalist Lori Garrett, former Vice President Al Gore and Spike Lee. No panel, just interviews. And I know Donnie Jr. just wants his dad to love him or notice him in a way that's not mocking him, but I just find it fascinating to watch the phony online outrage machine generate content on Twitter based on something that was never real to begin with. It's kind of surreal to watch it all just kind of play out. In the words of our dear leader, sad. Wow, owned. Yeah, really. uh, Donald Trump Jr. responded on Twitter with this picture that's circulated before of, I guess, Anderson Cooper in a deep portion of a flooded city or town. And he gave him the clown emoji. Now, in fairness, I I saw some replies to this, people saying that in that piece, Anderson Cooper said, I'm getting down into the deepest section here. So it wasn't misleading. I don't I don't know. I don't know if this was misleading or not, but it is a funny photo nonetheless. Anyway, as a society, I want to get to a place where we can just openly make fun of him for being a giant fag. Can we do that yet? <laughs> you gotta take your, take your pick. Do you want to make fun of the Chinese first or the gays first? Which mm. one? Right now, the Chinese, but okay. my hatred of the Chinese is really first and foremost in my mind at this point in time. <laughs> right. yeah. uh, I mean, you, you made the point why... So to Anderson, just because you have other ridiculous and unqualified guests doesn't mean that Greta isn't an isn't Spike a ridiculous Lee? and unqualified. Why? Yeah, Spike Lee, Alicia Keys. Why do I care? Why do I care? 
and his focus on the distinction between a panel and a guest. We we didn't have a panel. She was just a guest. She wasn't on a panel. She was just Who a cares? guest. Who cares? Irrelevant. Why yeah, are you talking the... to this person anyway? It's totally stupid. It's all right. stupid. <laughs> what's the difference? The point is she's not qualified to tell us about coronavirus. Anyway, um, we're up, up against the clock. So um, if yeah. you're ready to move into uh, the segment uh, the segment that is resurrected now, Hoax Hate of the Week. You ready? Oh, is there already time? Yeah. I'll lean back for this 30-second sounder. All right. Now, the nobody saw it happen, but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Ah, shit, it's backwards. You think they'll notice? Well, I already, uh, I already spoiled the surprise, but of course there are protests uh, ongoing about the Ahmad Arbery case. Even threats apparently made to the protesters. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation has arrested a suspect in connection with the threats against the protesters. Uh, but it's um, it's not the neo-Nazi you'd expect. Unfortunately, I've already spoiled it on the screen. But here was the here was the reporting, the TV reporting. We also got word late tonight that Georgia's Bureau of Investigation made an arrest for a, a terroristic threat made towards Arbery's protesters. Investigators say the post contained a safety threat to future protest in Brunswick related to Arbery and was made from a fake account using someone else's likeness. They took 20 year old Rashawn Smith, who is African American, into custody and they've charged him with dissemination of information relating to terroristic acts. Uh, Rashawn Smith, as they noted, is not a Nazi or a white supremacist. You can see his mugshot on Rashawn screen there. Rashawn Smith. This is from the Liberty County Sheriff's Office. Now, the threats came from a Facebook post, according to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The GBI called the threat a hoax threat because the suspect created a profile pretending to be someone else and didn't have plans to carry out a threat but there was an intention to incite terror. So what was the post and what was the fake profile? Well, apparently or allegedly, Smith used the online profile John Huto, Hutto, uh, complete with a, let's see if I can get a bigger picture here. Yeah, a Trump Pence profile picture, big fat bearded white guy with a rifle and a Trump Pence I don't know, overlay on the thing. This was his online profile, John Huto. And uh, he, you can see some replies that he made to comments on various uh, Facebook stories about the Ahmad Arbery case, calling people mouthy little N-word lovers. <laughs> You're on the wrong side, son. <laughs> like to see you try if you sell out N-word lover. Okay, so the post that actually got him arrested, though, it says, uh, summarized, uh, if the protests continue, I will organize a mass shooting in Brunswick at the courthouse where you guys protest. I have friends in high places. Don't believe me. Things will get messy. And I bet you won't walk away at the end of the day. I guarantee you. Huto out. Okay. Huto out. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Mr. Smith. But uh, we do have a couple more cases quickly. Some what's the deal with this? Some NAA, Nashville NAACP president found a bullseye in his at his home. Yeah. OK, so this dude uh, in North Nashville told police he discovered in the news, uh, he discovered a target with a bullseye outside his home just before 830 p.m. on Saturday. He believed the target was placed on his property as a threat or a form of intimidation because of his role within the community. He was kind of right. Um, a Monday afternoon, Metro Police tweeted the following messages. Detectives have identified Roy E. Brown, and Brown he is, 63, mm. as the man who placed a plastic target on the yard of NAACP President Keith Caldwell Saturday afternoon. Brown said he has known Caldwell for years and thought the target resembled a flower that would look nice in Caldwell's yard. Metro Police said Caldwell signed a state misdemeanor citation charging Brown with intimidation. Um, and then they're also saying it's a mental health thing. Why? I'm sure they Caldwell's were in cahoots, like, but this guy does look kind of crazy. So. so he agreed to press charges on this guy for, even though he's a yeah. mentally ill man who meant well. Uh, did did he though? I'm sure well, that I don't they, know. The guy says he thought it was like a flower or something, right? I'm sure that they talked about this beforehand, right? Or but why wouldn't you just do it yourself? I just don't understand the Cald Caldwell is the end of Lacey P guy. Yeah. 
Caldwell, so Caldwell decided to press charges, citing Brown with intimidation. Why? What did yes. he do? Well, he signed he, a state misdemeanor citation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. He's probably trying to cover his own ass or something. Hmm. Do you think he's crazy? I am advocating for the case to be heard in mental health court. That's what he says. Okay. All right. So who knows? I, I, they probably the, colluded and got busted. I'm whatever, so cynical about all these cases. I'm like, mm. whatever it was, it was not a, a racist, not, it was not a racist white or non-black person targeting a black person for intimidation as was originally presented. No, of course not. And then you got uh, racist graffiti in the known racist haven of Nova Scotia, Canada. This is my favorite because she for sure did it. This like one drop black chick. Uh, yeah, you were saying that she doesn't count. I don't know. What, do, does she count she's as She's like less black than Rashida Jones and kind of looks like Rashida Jones. I saw this picture of her and I'm like, hmm, this is a chick with a serious identity crisis because she's not being accepted by the black community because she's clearly white. Did it say, so this is on some, what, what is the graffiti on a rock or something? Yeah. So okay. Uh, the graffiti. Black N words in <laughs> Shelburne eating watermelon. <laughs> black. Does it say black N words? Uh, yeah, I think so. As opposed to what white N white or, yeah. or brown or what? Yeah. Uh, which use the N word, the graffiti, which use the N word as a stereotype and a stereotype about black people having an appetite for watermelon. I love this article. It's hilarious. Was spotted by Vanessa Hartley. Can you pull up her picture? Yeah. By Vanessa Hartley's mother on Monday. She was out mm. for a walk by the old naval base. Um, Vanessa said, I just characterize it as hate. And I, being a person of color, mm. have experienced so much hate that I don't understand how one person could do it anymore. Oh my God, my life has been so hard because I'm an I'm ethnically ambiguous, hot, young chick. I'm like, sure she has experienced so much hate in Nova Scotia. In Nova Scotia, right. She <laughs> some, also expressed... Some Canadian was like, hey, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want like, some what, uh, watermelon on that? What poutine? kind of foreigner are you, eh? Like something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah, that was the hate. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, she also expressed her disappointment that racism, which she's faced throughout her life, has reared its head again. She said the graffiti used a stereotype that's rooted in historic racism. She hopes her post has yeah. created. This is how I know she did it. She hopes her post has created an opportunity for people to denounce racism and embrace the town's racial roots. She said, racial when roots. are we going to appreciate the deep culture that is Shelburne? Because a lot of our culture is black history. So I'm just supposed to believe that this racist message that makes no sense black n-words weren't we talking about white n-words though didn't that get somebody banned sargon from patreon right uh yeah. so maybe I, I i shouldn't say that but um i'm just supposed to believe that like this totally incoherent racial slur with like the most stereotypical thing about black people with the watermelon thing that this chick who's having a a serious identity crisis because she's like 2% black and how, nobody... how old is she? I don't know. She looks like she's in her early 20s, but I don't know. She looks really young, like high school student. Yeah. I'm supposed to believe that her mom is the, also the one that discovers oh, 20. this. Yeah, she is 20. It's to give her a platform. She's doing this for some fucking college essay or some shit. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, it could be. I can see that. But I'm a thousand percent sure that she and her mom did this. Hmm. Or that she did it and then she sent her mom to... Like, go for a walk at the naval base in Sandy <laughs> Point, Mom. It is very neat, uh, loosely feminine graffiti handwriting, yeah. Black N-words eat watermelon. If you were going to commit a, a hoax hate, like, would you, I mean, that's not what I would do. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> I would go to a local park and chop down an Anne Frank memorial tree. <laughs> Are you confessing to the crime right now? <laughs> no. That one was not hoax hate. That was real hate that in was Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Well, we got to catch up on Super Chats. That's it for a show. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm going to eat some Indian food tonight. Watch The Last Dance. Have you started it? Uh, no. I'm told it's very good, though, by you and ah, other people. Over so on. Uh, over on D Live, Crypto Crook says, as opposed to snow N word, Matt, you should know better. And I will say, over on D Live, the N word was straight up, not censored at all. Susan Seriously? couldn't stop that one. So if you want 
uncensored chat, I guess D Live is the place to be. Thanks for supporting the show. Um, this is from Jesus J. Hey Matt. Hey blonde. First time donor. Rona bucks, baby. Get a joke for you. How do you catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on them. Boo. I know, but it gets worse. How do you catch a tame what? rabbit? The tame way. All right. That's pretty good. That's cute. I don't even get that one really. It's it's a, little pun, a little punny. Just pun. Just puns. All right. Thank uh, you for supporting the show and for uh, spending your hard earned Corona bucks this way. J Val says went out to eat Friday in downstate Illinois. Did not snitch, although the local health department had asked people to contact state, not them over snitches, so they could focus on actual health. Hmm. Okay. Well, glad to see uh, and hear things are working out. We're getting better at least. Yeah, things are feeling more normal. That's the important thing. Um, Thunder thought, I live in New York City area and about 80% of people outside are wearing masks. I hmm. imagine that people in more sparsely populated states feel far more relaxed about it than they do here. Yeah, uh, and I can't even say uh, that that's to be expected too. I might be more concerned about this if I lived in New York City. But, you know, I don't. Yeah. And I, I don't think that, um, I don't, I would never advocate for New York and Montana ha to have the same, to have the same response. I, Dennis Prager did a whole piece on that. If you, if the, if the virus was going crazy in Montana, do you think New York would lock down? Not a chance. No chance they would. They, they would not care. And I don't think they have to. Do you think people are curtailing promiscuous sexual behavior? Uh, in New York. As, as in they're going abstinent to avoid coronavirus? Well, I mean, do you think that like gay men are having promiscuous anal sex while wearing face masks? <laughs> I doubt there's anybody doing that. At least I hope. I hope that, that, that there's nobody doing that. I just but, hope that people maybe. are being consistent. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Uh, Metal Man. The government going through my search history. Wow, this guy sure does a lot of gardening and goes through Roombas like a fat kid <laughs> goes through cupcakes. <laughs> oh man oh yikes uh streaming pile i want to thank you too for wanting me want to thank you too for wanting me to keep going with my twitch stream streaming pile no space hearts for you both thank you keep well, at it yeah good luck with the stream thanks for supporting the show john martin says jogger's gonna jog how long until <laughs> jogger is a racial slur it's what? happened already we're That's... not far off yeah um ipa and whiskey first super chat ever but can I read? Am I illiterate now? Pregnancy illiteracy. Um, but over been, but been watching you guys for two years, watching you two for like four years now. God, I'm so dumb. So I guess <laughs> you you're go. kind of all right. Thanks for being my weekly podcast. Matt, go to church and have a baby. He's well, thanks for it. supporting the show. I got to get, I got to get married first. October is the date. And, um, and I would expect that it's not going to be, long thereafter like uh, next year i could be in the same spot well the male equivalent spot that you're in right now where we're expecting a kid sometime next summer definitely could happen are you also going to develop debilitating anxiety no i will <laughs> not that is not in my nature our son that's true low on neuroticism you yeah um our son in a v i n v um i'm a fire investigator oh hence arson envy there arson you go. Inventory. Arson investigator. There you go. Or arson inventory. Oh my God. What happened <laughs> in my brain? I should get a cast scan. It's probably Close all atrophied. Enough. Arson yeah. investigator. Um, okay. That actually really is going to help in the future. I guarantee you my search history includes all kinds of no, no items. Nobody cares unless you shit the bed in a big <laughs> way. Uh, that's true. I mean, remember Thanks that story of that, um, that, that white nationalist coast guard guy that had yeah. like a totally reasonable arsenal. And maybe had a spreadsheet with some specifics about he, some targets. He wrote but. Richard Blumen Jew instead of Richard <laughs> Jumenthal. Jumenthal. The obvious pun. It, just for that, I was like, you could burn in hell. Convicted, yeah. Yeah, Luna Vizi. Blonde, have you ever been to the wineries in Kelowna, Kelowna BC? Um, Matt, would you ever be up for meeting uh, for a beer with some Vancouver, BC listeners when COVID is gone? I have not because I am a non-drinker, yeah. which makes me sound really uncool, but it's true. If I was ever in Vancouver, sure. I, I went there once. I went to a snowboard camp in Whistler when I was a young teenager. That is the most foreign trip I've ever taken to. I went to Canada once and that's it. You so, need to uh, revisit your snow ape roots. 
I anticipate we'll be traveling somewhere for our honeymoon. And I think uh, Scandinavian countries would be a cool spot, but we haven't picked out anything yet. We're mostly just trying to get the wedding all sorted out and then we'll worry about that later. But then, you know, if you want to have kids early too, you got to go, you got to go on the honeymoon quickly because you don't want to go on the honeymoon pregnant. You don't want to do anything pregnant. Yeah. Uh, I drove to Seattle this last, like a few days ago, and it was a whole thing. Just I like bet. a five hour drive. As in you was drove like, yourself or someone drove you? I drove myself. Mm. Uh, Aaron Nuclear Jogger had to do a marathon to jog to the work site. Flynn case judge violated significant precedent from senior courts. Yeah, we'll see yeah, how this plays out. Ridiculous. But it's, it's nonsensical to me as a layman. Professor Chaos. Judge Sullivan's order violates the recent Supreme Court 9-0 decision that forbids consideration of anything other than that than what has been pled by the parties in the criminal case. Hmm. Let me read that again. And he's got the case reference too. So we'll have to take a look at the case. But even absent a Supreme Court decision, I'm not aware of allowing third, third parties to enter and prosecute a criminal case. That doesn't make any sense. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah. Rule of law? What? Uh, Dan Boudreaux. The Supre- oh, I've got to skip the one. Uh, YouTube name. Um, Sanders you. skipped the vote on the privacy bill that failed by one vote. He opposes warrantless wiretapping, but was working on his unity task force. Oh, very convenient. That is convenient. Yeah. Michael Anderson. Biden is not people's great grandpa. He's people's mediocre grandpa. <laughs> Just saying. Fair point. The Tara Reid thing really uh, fell off the map. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of new information this week, which prior we were getting a little bit of information on kind of a weekly basis, which made me wonder, is that intentional? Is someone behind that? But this week, as far as I understand, we really didn't get any new revelations on that front. Yeah, 100% of my motivation for believing her is just residual anger about Kavanaugh. I get it. That was that was one of the biggest uh, pieces of political bullshit in our entire lifetime, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, Michael Anderson, Biden is not people's. Oh, I just read that one. Uh, Scott Graham, my understanding with the Michael Flynn in the charges being dropped is the government doesn't want to reveal any information that could further lead to uncovering deep state corruption. Ugh, that's probably true. Interesting. Yeah. It's nothing that other story we covered. Like, we're supposed to trust the FISA courts again. Yeah. Well, they're definitely going to uh, impose, they're going to handle your internet search history responsibly. Totally. Sure. This time they're going to do. And also, why is it delegated to them? I don't know. And I don't I don't understand how this all plays out, because, of course, American citizens can get caught up in a FISA court investigation if there's a foreign actor that is being surveilled. Right, It's foreign intelligence. Yes. Yeah. Who the hell? Is, that's what I understand how a, a FISA court can be used to authorize a search on a person's web browsing history who's just an American citizen. There'd have to be right. some sort of suspicion that you were in communication or cooperation with a foreign force or foreign personnel who intend to do this country harm which is crazy especially with everybody using vpns and such it's like you you wouldn't even know Mm. um but for purely domestic surveillance like are they just using fisa because they know the court is corrupt and (laughs) i don't know and apparently this web this web browser history stuff has this sort of search has been going on for a while it's not new yeah so i should look into the history of how this has been done Shanique was sending him brave for years. My grandma said I was too reliant on technology. She caught the commie cough last week. I like that. So I turned her life support off. Thanks, Matt, for inspiring <laughs> me to hold people to their principles. Everyone kill your granny. That's it's, the advice that's we're giving. The main principle of this show. Uh, Nicholas Van Neel. Obama says that you shouldn't have as much faith in those in charge, but he did not oversee unprecedented power sent to the executive. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Jim Keats, sorry for joining late. Two of my three sons and I were watching Band of Brothers. Matt, care to say anything about the helmet in your background? Love the show, Blonde. Prayers for you and the baby. Thank you so much. It's a great show. And the uh, the piece in the background is, uh, yeah, it's a World War II paratrooper helmet. My brother was a paratrooper. And so that's kind of a family piece that I uh, that I carry on. And that's why it sits back there. But it's, uh, it's, a, cool, uh, it's a cool piece. It's got a 2508th patch in it. Fury from the Sky, the old school World War II. Uh, devil in a parachute so it's not actually 101st like the uh like band of brothers it's 82nd the patch at least not the helmet necessarily but the story is it's a family piece that i keep back there for uh for sentimental reasons and the show is great and so is the pacific you ever watch the pacific mm-hmm. uh the uh they're by tom hanks and steven spielberg 
you know, these days. That's a controversial thing to say. But they're both great shows. And The Pacific is, that came out in 2010 and it follows three Marines through the Pacific Theater of World War II. But both of those shows are, are really awesome. Well, if you ever got a tattoo, what's on that helmet would, a tramp stamp of that. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not in the 2508, so I would never, uh, I would never get uh, a military tattoo to which I do not belong. But uh, no, that's true. That would really piss people off. Right? Yeah. Uh, Colby Riggle uh, balkanized the Middle Kingdom. Do you know what that is? Uh, I don't. Uh, is that what we're, is that we're going to build the Middle Kingdom in the center of the United States? Maybe. Dude, it has the shittiest weather. I want coastal I regions back. Maybe we can get one. Maybe you could. Maybe you could salvage the South, like you know, Gulf <sighs> Coast. Georgia. God, I don't want to live in the South. It's <laughs> so hot. All right. Well, what Ugh. are we going to do? The West Coast is entirely compromised. Yeah. Can't we clear it out? More forest fires. Can we do that? Um, Pol Polaris 589. Kurt Schlichter is constantly telling people to buy guns and ammo. We should have him on the show. At Kurt Schlichter. Okay. Tony L., right. um, communications director, and I can't even communicate her name. I chuckled. Did I say I, that? I, that's what I said, because I can't. I still don't know how to pronounce her name. I was like, that's clever. But she is the communications director. You guys, I'm not dogging on the South. I just can't handle the way I cannot handle. I, I grew up in St. Louis. Those summers were brutal. At brutal, this point, I would, I'd be willing to put up with weather inconveniences over the other inconveniences that these people offer in your life in terms of suffocating taxes, in terms of suffocating control over every aspect of your life. Yeah, but I get that I, in North Idaho and all I have to do is deal with a seven month long, never ending winter where there's three feet of snow for four months out of the year. I like the winter. I'll take it. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, Bill McPherson, want to blow your lid? Check out the insanity of the coronavirus subreddit. Pretty much nothing but disinformation and people believing other nations are locked down when they're not because they don't value money like Americans. Maybe I need to like do mm. Reddit again. I just thought I it never didn't got exist into anymore. It. Wow. Thanks, well, Bill. thanks for fighting the good fight on Reddit, I guess, if you're, if you're participating and not lurking. You'll probably get banned if you are, though. China is the Middle Kingdom? Oh. Well, is I that... guess I misinterpreted that totally. We're pretty <laughs> misinterpreted dumb. that totally wrong. Yeah. Uh, far too hard. Um, you know all these young people at the bars and restaurants are Trump supporters. Every one that's probably true or at least they will be now yeah <laughs> yeah if they aren't already robert lockhart blonde here's my star trek parenting joke for you <laughs> who is every vulcan child fathered by answer by a logical father <laughs> the vulcans are logical i don't know the show uh... <laughs> Rebecca Lilly, Crenshaw introducing a bill to allow $600 unemployment check to continue after they go back. Thoughts? This is the fair. How is this fair to essentials? Starting to wish I lost my job. That's I horseshit. Didn't, I didn't know that he did that. But yeah, the $600 federal supplementation of state unemployment benefits is how a lot of people are making more money on unemployment yeah. than they were working their old job. And if you're the sort of person who works at a grocery store or another so -called, another so called essential business, you really do get the screw because you go to work and you work an honest job that might not be the highest paying in the world, but you're also not going to lose it because it's essential. Meanwhile, your friend who works at some other non-essential retail gets laid off, keeps it actually gets paid to be laid off until July at the earliest, possibly yeah. onward. Anyway, th thanks for, thanks for sticking with it and try not to get too mad. Do you think Shaniqua stunning and brave is Kevin Flanagan's ego? Like for, black I don't know. People? It's Australian. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, it is. So it's not Kevin Flanagan. Um, initially, they asked for a few weeks lockdown. We agreed and they obligated us to do more than we're comfortable with, all with wide public support. Does this mean date rape won't be a thing anymore? <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you try it out and see? Yeah, it's um, gone. JK, I'm not advocating date rape. Uh, Tom Batra. I joined the Navy just before the coronavirus, the corona crisis started, and now I'm wishing... I just quit my job instead. I'd be paid for sitting in quarantine anyway, but I can order food delivery when not on wow. base. Wow. Incentives, man. Well, thanks for serving the country either way. And, can, uh, sorry. Go for it. Uh, can you read some so I can lean back? Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Zunesis says, uh, watch Computing Forever's latest two videos. The doctor he had, Dolores Cahill, is impressive background. 
or has an impressive background, says lockdowns were not only unnecessary but harmful. Accepting responsibility for her claims and offering official expertise pro bono. I'll have to check it out. I know Dave's put together a lot of good work. He was one of the people early on who questioned the death count that really got my mind spinning on this. So, so I'll happily give it a look. First son of man says, uh, blonde, you look great. Miss your videos, but love the new channel with Robin. It's, uh, it's TMI and gnarly too much information and gnarly. Who is Gretchen Thornberry? Uh, Matt, your videos always make me think to find the higher ideal. Love you both. I'm drunk. Well, uh, thanks for enjoying the show along with your alcohol and for supporting. I am not going to be niggardly. Chris Barnett says, uh, longtime listener, first time chatter. Love, love you guys. You are my sanity safe space. My father's a police officer and he had a lot of his colleagues. He said a lot of his colleagues are refusing to enforce unconstitutional laws. Right. I hope that's true. I hope the people that I'm seeing are not representative. And of course, I'm not going to automatically distrust cops in my community on account of the bad ones that are elsewhere. And I haven't seen a lot of terrible stuff going on here. So I'm glad to hear that there are the ones out there that, that take that oath seriously and exercise a little independent mindedness and think, is what I'm doing constitutionally right, morally right? All of those questions. Bill McPherson says, nearly all law enforcement agencies have polices have or have policies against public statements regardless it infringes his own first amendment rights some agencies respect this more than others numerous sheriffs have made similar statements you get into a lot of um complications and i'm not particularly well read on the law but government as an employer mm -hmm. is it a first amendment violation for the government to suppress what you can say in the employment capacity and then the question is is he saying that as a private citizen or as a police representative? He was in his uniform and all that. Yeah. I, I don't know. The case law on that is pretty complex. I understand the police department's perspective. I just, um, so, you know, I don't want to throw the police department totally under the bus because I get the principle that they're defending there. But I, I'll just appreciate that he's willing to take that hit for the Constitution, for what he thinks is right. Uh, this is Freddie Sauce. Thanks, Fun fact, the FDA just cleared those refrigerated trailers they were using as morgue corpse overflow for food transport. Ugh. Mm. After a thorough cleaning, of course, I still feel kind of Can't wait about to it. dig yeah. in. <laughs> Long Dong John. After eight years of Big LC, it's time for a name change. <laughs> Hope you like it. Give that officer the Matt, the, the Matt Christensen Award for upholding the Constitution trophy and all. That is well, give him his own award, man. I, I don't. I, I, I haven't done jack shit, but talk about it on the Internet. That guy actually put his put his livelihood on the line for it. So good for him. Chicago girl in a SoCal world. In Tim's video, it showed a text from police officer to English instructing him to contact McMichael day or night if there was a trespasser again. Matt, I'll email you the story. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see it. I'm not aware of that fact. So that would be uh, important in, in terms of how this all plays out. Uh, Eric Charm Ella. <sighs> yeah, thank you. Social media clauses were added to employment paperwork to ensure that their employees had only, only had corporate sanctioned opinions. Until this nonsense ends, I'll stick to anonymity. Yeah. I, yeah, I get it. You kind of have to. You know, I, uh, saying what saying what you believe is costly these days, and I understand people's calculations on that front. Unless you're an angry boomer with a daughter that's already destroyed her internet <laughs> reputation. Um, and that's the kind of thing, like in this pool, you don't really dip your toes. You either dive in or, or not. Like you can't dabble in the world of free and open internet opinions. You got to yeah. be all in or not. Yeah, totally. Uh, fat hooligan just had friends over for dinner. We all agree that we will all make our own decisions and assess risk for ourselves. So don't listen to the authoritarians and enjoy your life as you see fit right on. Exactly. Sounds like a plan to me. Good for you. Laurel. My 77 year old mother has stopped self isolating. Enough is enough. She can't take it anymore. She'd rather go out and risk COVID death and stay locked up in her house. My sisters and I support her. That's great. Sure. And I'm glad whatever her decision is, it is her decision to make too. I know my dad yeah. would be the same way. My, my dad is a big time quality of life over quantity. And I know that if he was forced into some sort of situation like that, it's like, I'd rather risk death than live this way. And old like, people have earned that right. Yeah. You earn the right to do your own risk assessment as an old person and to say whatever you want <laughs> to people at all times. And I even a little light groping, George H.W. Bush A little style. light groping, yeah. some high level racism. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You get a pass at like you 90. You get a pass, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, David Copperfield. Yeah. Yeah. His favorite uh, magician, George H.W. Bush. <laughs> Metal man. Matt and I once made love and he found out I intentionally transmitted HIV to him and he called me <laughs> Mr. Meaner and winked. Wow. Ugh. That that was a gross one. Uh, a. Dennigan. Uh, <laughs> one of the last things done in a building, in building a house is installing the plumbing fixtures and until you do that, can't turn on water to the building. Matt keeps supporting Corona. That's true. We got to keep them alive. Yeah, I guess that would be another question. I guess I'd assume that since it's an active construction site, they probably had some sort of water there for people working on the site. But how common is that to have running That's, water? I don't know. I don't build houses. I don't know. Hey, Dennigan, one. Oh, I just read that. Uh, Freddie Sauce. Last year, YouTuber Actual Justice Warrior supposedly was able to track down the address of where Amory was living. Arbery must be. Yeah. And it's about two miles from the house under construction. 10 miles was city center to his house. Gotcha. Okay. That kind of changes things. Yeah. I, guess. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's more sensible. Not that 10 isn't sensible necessarily, but it's, it's odd. That's too far for like a casual. You'd be jog. pretty hardcore to be going 10 miles away from your home. Just jogging. Yeah. Well, Alexander V says love from Ukraine. He also said, Megan hates you. Hates me. Hates me. So I assume him. Megan, why do you uh, hate Alexander? Why? What did know. he do to you? Break your heart. Uh, Paul B. Hey, Matt and Blonde, I'm tickled pink to see Obamagate flush dude's legacy down the toilet. The beginning of the end of the bombshell walls are closing in. Suck it, MSM. You know, I'd agree with you, but I've been burned before. We talk about it constantly, but Skag and I got really annoyed at each other when I was like, during the FISA thing in 2017, where I was like, <laughs> this is the end. Everybody's going to go to jail and Clinton Gate and going to die in jail. And Skag was like, temper your expectations, bitch. Well, in fairness, this has been, I, I had been a little more skeptical about the legitimacy of all of this the whole way. And this thing has a lot more legs than I thought at the time. So I'll acknowledge that, that the idea that there was political spying going on uh, seems pretty well substantiated at this point, much better than it was then. And I, I think we were just wondering who's going to actually... Are there going to be consequences for the people who did this? Yeah, I mean, Bill in Barr's terms still investigating. of public opinion, um, timeliness is really essential. And it's just like it's been too long for people to remember the details of any of these things. It's also confusing how they're connected hmm. and who was responsible. Uh, nobody says breaking news. COVID infections can raise your BAC. <laughs> no, drunk on coronavirus. Yeah. Will Boone, um, that New York has such a high death rate and won't be called out as ridiculous. Constant defense by the media and none in state government is not held responsible. But then again, if you have a brother in media, why should we be surprised? Yeah, he is protected very well, Andrew Cuomo. Greta Thunberg is the goat. Greta of all Thunbergs. Thunbergs. <laughs> How dare you? She's the Greta of all Thunbergs. Greta they, uh, of thank all you. Thunbergs. Um, yes. Chris Barnett, I want or to start tune a... bears. Sorry, not Toonbergs. Toon yeah, bears. that is what he's Toon bear. You know, he practiced yeah. in front of the mirror. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Chris Barnett, I want to start a fund to get Greta to sing the song. I want it now from Willy Wonka and hopefully <laughs> it will end in the same way. Oh, man. Poor Greta. Esoterica Unbound. Now that it's becoming clear that the models are all crap, has it dawned on Fauci and Burks yet that Trump has kept them on board to take all the blame for the real disaster here? No, I mean, I think that... Fauci has uh, more uh, sinister motives and that keeping him on board was more of an oversight. I don't think that this is some 3D mm. chess thing. That guy sucks. Look at what he did with the AIDS. With the AIDS is what I just said. <laughs> Son of the wolf. Did you all see Vox ran a story saying the jogger is the new N-word? I laughed myself to death so when I saw that. We're late. We're actually late on this. They're already doing Oh, I knew this. about this already. Oh, I didn't. I got to Google this right now. Um, shouting from the cheap seats. Shame on Susan WikiWiki for not allowing my sparky super chat regarding the Golden State permitted activities and freedom. Yeah, shame on you, Susan. Sean Garvey, if an expert foresees a crisis and recommends radical policy prescriptions to forestall it, they will invariably be wrong. Um, they should be completely ignored and probably mocked. I can't find the story right now, and I don't want to separate my attention too much. <laughs> But I do uh, see a, a publication on something else. I don't see it from Vox, but I see some other stuff. I'll have to try and find it later. If if the, if it's now the J word. Uh, Ian Leslie, the pizza delivery business is going great. Thanks for the content. I bet. Well, <laughs> totally. and thanks for thanks for uh, sending some support our way. Appreciate it. Darlene Cates says, "Cop video, big issue is, is radio in background." 
Only verified members of Lawfire EMS have access. Hmm. Uh, Brandon Tatum gives analysis based on his experience in Mesa and Tucson PD. Also has couple on Aubrey. Thanks for our safe space. Oh, is that true? I don't know. I'll, I'll check it out. I haven't and, heard about uh, that. And uh, as far uh, I want to say shout out to Darlene too. She sent me some fantastic cowboy cookbooks. That's the one ago. she sent me, and they're amazing. Yeah, so I got my fiance digging through there. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, picking out some items to cook me in the future Make here. That so cowboy sushi and see how it goes. We were looking at that. Is it good? I haven't had it yet. Uh, it looks awesome. Looks There's awesome. a bunch of good recipes in there. Uh, Shanique was stunning and brave. Pity Greta wasn't pimped out to, to assist the experts in their field on Epstein's Island. Oh, <laughs> it's dark dark you gotta start yeah, as as people have said this epstein cover-up is going way too far it's been nothing it's but hard. since august yeah um it's okay she only gave alan dershowitz a foot rub it's fine guys um, <laughs> Mr. rich low pitch said someone on tim pool's podcast compared whitmer to dolores umbridge and harry potter also mm. i can't stand these losers on facebook who have no family business or aspirations talking about how lockdown isn't a big deal yeah, yeah. well funny if you've never built a damn thing in your life, it's not a big deal. Uh, or if you have a guaranteed yeah. job. Um, to be fair, though, lockdown has changed my life. Like almost none outside of prenatal care. It hasn't changed a lot in my life drastically personally, other than outside forces are telling me what to do. And you know how that works out in my mind. I'm mm -hmm. not having any of that. Sky and loves him. Tell him how to so, the show. Well, and I'm not so detached. I can imagine a situation. I fear Susan wiki wikiing our show any day. I know, I know one day I'm going to wake up and this show is going to be deleted or my channel is going to be deleted. And I know I'll have to navigate that. What I'm saying is I've, I and we have had the experience of taking risk and abandoning everything we had to try to build something else. And thank God it's worked out. I'm, I'm so thankful for it. This is a much more but, risky endeavor for you than it is for me. When I, so by proxy, I understand what it's like to pour everything you have to build whether you consider this a business in the brick and mortar sense or whatever it is, I understand that experience. And if someone like Susan Wiki Wiki or worse, the government came in and said, we're going to smash this by force. We're going to smash everything you built over the last four years now, by the way, we're at like right about now is the four year anniversary of the show. It was May 5th. Oh, it was earlier. Yeah. So, okay. So we've already passed it to have somebody smash it by force would, would enrage me beyond any rage I've ever experienced in my life, probably. So uh, I, I can understand what those people are experiencing. And I'm not so detached that I think, well, it's not affecting me, so who cares? Yeah, yet. When yeah. that, I, like Ruby Ridge levels of rage. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shauna Thornton, two, sent two. My school is doing completely online uh, through the fall and likely winter quarter as well. I'm in Washington State for those listening. The fact that there needs to be a state license to cut hair is already proof that we've gone too far. <laughs> also, that officer was based. Man, Shauna, that is some horse he, shit right He is there. cool. You see California State University system is not opening in the fall period. They're going to do all remote learning or whatever. I'd be so pissed if I was like a, a senior in the California State University system. Yeah, I mean, for universities, for selfish purposes, I hope that this continues. But like they're going to have to open public schools and stuff. Hmm. Can you imagine being like a single mom right now and having to homeschool several children? How would you even do that? If you're not doing it normally, yeah, you're thrown into uh, quite a situation there. Good luck. Also, China's back to school. Do we want China to get ahead? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it, we kind of followed. We've we've taken some Chinese examples in terms of how we've enforced the lockdowns on our country from place to place maybe not commonly but here and there uh, Jacob, if okay. if china's back to normal before we are that's uh, or a quicker timeline than we did that's pretty outrageous jacob the, the main advantage of heat and humidity is that they are at least semi-effective yankee repellent one of the few insects worse than horse <laughs> flies the uh, war of northern aggression never forget <laughs> yeah i uh, i'm saying the south is probably not my preferred climate but there are things i would rather there are things I'd rather have than a perfect climate. You know, That's climate true. Is, I'm willing to make a sacrifice on. I'm not genetically designed to live in super hot climates. I need like boggy weather. However, Somalis have made it work in Minnesota. <laughs> so who knows? The world That's is true. That's true. That's very, yeah. That's, that's tree, quite a shock. I didn't know about the extra $600 from the federal government. My first ever unemployment check came in yesterday. 
and it was six hundred dollars more than I was expecting. Thought it was a mistake. Anyway, here's your tax money back, man. <laughs> that's wow. Crazy. Well, thanks for supporting the show, man. Last one is Andrew Brick. Spent weekend with Boomer parents and family in northern Washington. Got black market haircut from neighbor parents. Think <laughs> the response to China virus was stupid, and just want everyone to be free to thrive. Um. Yep. I mean, and come on over to North Idaho if you really want to see some people throwing throwing caution to the wind. I've been to hmm. three parties since this started. Bill McPherson has one before we're done on Super Chat. A, a law enforcement officer speaking on internal matters isn't a First Amendment protection. Speaking on constitutionality is. My former employer had decent policies on this despite um, other poorly thought out policies in other areas. There's a lot sense. of te technicalities on how this um, how this plays out. So, uh, so, and that's, I just, I don't have a lot of knowledge on that front, so I don't want to make claims I can't support. Anyway, uh, thank you, Bill. Much appreciated. I think we just have a couple on Streamlabs perhaps, and then we'll call it a show. Thanks for supporting on DLive as well, guys. Uh, let's see. Just Redicus says Seattle is losing cops left and right, but will punish a person for his free speech. The non-political statements only goes one way. Leftist churches are allowed, but conservatives get their attack status pulled. I haven't wanted to go tactical nuke, but, well, if you have a tactical nuke at your disposal, uh, don't drop it on Seattle. Uh, that would be disavowed, uh, Susan. I want to make sure you're satisfied. Thank you, thank thanks. You, thank you. thanks, Redicus. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. You got anything else to say before we get out of here? Uh, nope. Let's pray for... A 37-week delivery, guys. <laughs> what are we at right now? 35? 35. Okay, so a couple more to go. Um, obviously, we you know we'll we'll navigate that delivery as it happens. The show's not going to get interrupted. Still going on. Interrupted in terms of being on Sunday night. I'll be here, damn it. And I'll I'll have you call in through Skype from the from the hospital. I don't. I'm know. not doing that. We'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for tuning in live. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you're looking for more of the show. You can, of course, find additional stuff over on the audio platforms. Uh, the call-in show replay is over there. We've got some stuff, uh, other interviews you might not find on YouTube. They're all linked in the description and on the website. You can email us as well. That's beautyandthebeta at gmail.com. Of course, we'll be back next Sunday, or at least some semblance of the show will be here every Sunday, because if it's Sunday, sorry, Chuck Todd. It's not Meet the Press. It's Beauty and the Beta. Hi, guys. Try